Welcome to Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Tushy. Listen, Thanksgiving is a time to express gratitude and recollect on what you're truly grateful for. It's also time when you invite your loud family members into your <laughs> home. They eat up all your food and they blow up your fucking bathroom with their post-meal shits. This year, make sure when your family shits your house, they leave with a clean ass. Get a Tushy bidet for $69 with a risk-free 60-day trial. What are you, like, Joy, what are you talking about? Bidets are back, bitches. That's what I'm talking about. There's no need to walk around with a stinky asshole and a fucked-up monkey. <laughs> and if your dick is stinky, this will also help the helmet also. Go to hellotushy.com. Use the code CHURCH, and we're going to give you 10% off your order. But listen, you could be a filthy fucking animal all year. Why be a filthy fucking animal throughout the fucking holidays? Wash that ass. Comb your hair. Do something, you filthy fuck. First thing you do is start with hellotushy.com. Use code CHURCH and get the 10% off. Because change starts from within. From within. It starts from washing your asshole. Then you get confidence. Now you can walk around with a bikini on. You understand me? Go to hellotushy.com right now and take a peek at the best bidet in the business. Portable to boot. If you got a stinky ass and you want to travel, bang, take it with you to the hotel. You can keep your little muffler fucking clean throughout the whole jingle bell process, all right? HelloTushy.com right now. Lee, kick this fucking meal. Are you fucking kidding me? That's how you got a party started. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you want to play that shitty music you've been listening to all your life, and that's why you're stuck with shitty friends and flies and shit. You got to start your parties <laughs> off with this song. Play that fucking music, white boy. Rick Ramos, the movie fucking entrepreneur connoisseur. This guy knows more about movies than you'll ever fucking dream of knowing. And my main man. The Christ Killer. It's this high time of the year. You can knock on his door. There's no Halloween. He gives you a five dollar bill. Jesus is coming. Jesus is dead, and he ain't coming back. You understand me? I was gonna. I think I get the five dollar bill. Why am I giving out five dollars? Because you're Jewish. It's good luck. You give somebody a fin. We also have a beautiful guest in the studio over here. A fucking apprentice learning the podcast game name. My dear friend, and that's it. Rick Ramos. A fucking pleasure to see you. No, it's a thrill to be here. It's Happy been too birthday. goddamn. Thank you, you turn, very much. What'd you turn the other day? I turned forty three. Jesus, goddamn! Really I boy. came out here. I was twenty four. Twenty four. I'm, you know. So you've been here twenty one years. Yeah, nineteen. Nineteen years. Jesus Christ! You what know? else would you have done this this fucking sentence? I don't know what That's the fuck else. Life. I don't know. I don't know what the hell else I can you do. You were a nice boy. You went to Chicago. I went to Chicago. Education. Yeah. You were a lit major. Yeah. You thought you were gonna write the world on fire. Nah, I started drinking with the Koreans and got all fucked up. There That's you what go. happened. That's you what happened. know, went to the fucking dark place and just decided I was gonna I was gonna dedicate myself to movies and that's what it is. You know, it's crazy that. We're very tight. We have a couple bonds because of the comedy store. Yeah. We have bonds because of a dear friend that passed. On my which birthday. Was her anniversary, 10 years. Yeah. Nobody remembered. I lit a candle. I fucking blew some cigar smoke at a picture. You know what I'm saying? To refresh the spirits and shit. <laughs> and she I was beautiful. You. She was beautiful. I laugh about her once a week still. I still sit there and go, oh my God, if she would have been around my daughter. She would have called her a bunch of fucking names oh, yeah. and shit and said stuff and and there's nothing I could have done because that's the way she was. Oh, I just, Joey, I just remember I would be it would be two o'clock in the morning. I'd be at my place. I'd have to teach kindergarten the next day, and the fucking phone would ring. And it, I knew two o'clock in the morning. That's her. I pick it up, and she was like. Put it on Jerry Springer, and there's a giant fat lady with a really tiny skinny guy who's her boyfriend, and we would just spend the next hour laughing our asses off, screaming into the phone as they showed this fat lady on her honeymoon in Hawaii trying to uh, parasail and shit like that, and she was just fucking ridiculous. She was... She was the hardest friend that I've ever had. You know what I mean? I loved her and couldn't stand her at the same time. When I first started dating my wife... Yeah. I remember she called the house at night, 3 in the morning. And I was in the bathroom doing blow, hiding, and the phone kept ringing and ringing and ringing. And my wife picked it up, and Marilyn goes, cocksucker. And my wife just looked at me, she goes, it's for you. And the next morning, my wife sat me down. We had been dating like maybe four months, and she goes, ah. These people. <laughs> Who are these people that call you and call you a cocksucker at four in the morning? And it was her. She called you at four in the morning. Cocksucker. 
What are you doing? What the fuck you think I'm doing? <laughs> I'm snorting coke, looking out a window. You got to wake up everybody, including the fucking cats. Call me tomorrow. Mm. And the husband, Dave, was great. And, uh, and, you know, I miss him. It's funny because I didn't go to Ralphie's memorial because of what I, I acted in Maryland's memorial. You acted perfectly I, I within. Go, I go. <laughs> I, I hate those events because my temper. Yeah. And I always go off. And I knew if I went to Ralphie's, I was going to go off on somebody. Yeah. And I kept thinking about Marilyn. And Marilyn's the one that drove me to Ralphie's. Marilyn Martinez was responsible for introducing me to Ralphie May. Mm -hmm. Because Marilyn called me and said, what are you doing? Are you home alone? Why are you home alone? Ralphie May is staying with Joy Medina. Over, over over at Alex Ray Mundo's Alex old, Ray place. Mundo's old place. place. I live there too. <laughs> yeah, that's it. you lived there now. I, I lived there for about a year. Yeah. Okay. And Back in goddamn two thousand. I lived there too. I lived yeah. there too. And he goes, he cooked. This yeah. Kid Ralphie May cooked a bunch of um, food. Yeah. Go over there, and uh, I was like, Ralphie May, the fat kid from Texas. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know him. And they go go over there. And I went over, it was like Thanksgiving. Yeah. It was something weird, and Ralphie yeah. cooked a fucking spread. Like, yeah. you know, it was his first LA spread. Like, mm -hmm. Ralphie came to LA, to, and he, he was a fat dude. That yeah. was funny. But I'm also going to teach you motherfuckers how to cook. Yeah. And he made this phenomenal spread, and that's when I became, he broke the futon. Yeah. It was a futon. I remember. Room. I remember. He broke that futon. Mm -hmm. And uh, we became dear friends, you know, from that thing I, I went over there on a holiday and he made me feel like fucking uh i guy, wasn't the deadbeat that i was the guy had a lot of heart man and he he you know he wanted to open up his home to everybody because he he liked the company you know well he was at home with us because then from joey's doug stanhope had an apartment on Curson that was rent control mm -hmm. for 620 dollars if you go two blocks down from mm -hmm. uh Curson and 7-Eleven and look up. Yeah, Doug Stanhope's still the man. He owns that apartment. He really? still rents it. He sub leases it, okay. but it's still his. He'll never give it up Smart because move. it's six hundred dollars yeah. in Hollywood. And it's got a garage. Oh shit! So his friend, uh, and I think it's Andy Andrist. I think that's the guy had an apartment on Schrader. Mm -hmm. What? No, no, no. On um, wherever the fuck Ralphie moved, ended up moving into. Yeah. That was originally Doug Stanhope's buddy's apartment mm -hmm. that had moved to Alaska. So Doug Stanhope would just go over there to have parties and yeah. threesomes and crazy shit <laughs> when he was dating the girl with the red hair so yeah. they wouldn't find them. So he yeah. would have that apartment <laughs> as a fucking another apartment. <laughs> so they wouldn't find him. Mm -hmm. That's where he would disappear then. So it was two blocks away. So he lived on Curson. <laughs> uh, Sierra Bonita was Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. And Nick DiPaolo. Mm -hmm. And then the next block was this kid, whatever. Once he left, Doug told Ralph he could stay in there yeah. temporarily until this kid came back as long as he paid rent. Yeah. So that was the deal. The kid said, get. So now Ralphie ended up in our neighborhood, which was that Nick and all mm -hmm. those guys. And I lived on Vista with yeah. Josh Wolf. Oh, That's God, how yeah. I met Ralphie through yeah. Marilyn Martinez. I think I spent more holidays with Ralphie and Marilyn Martinez mm -hmm. in all those years than I did. One year we went up there and we ate the mushrooms. And we gave Marilyn the mushroom and I ate the bag and I went down <laughs> there and the whole room was purple. And she yeah. kept telling me, Joey, this room is fucking purple. And I go, I, you're telling me. <laughs> I was on stage. You're talking to the wrong fucking dude. But I miss Marilyn. It was know? magic, though, man. She was just like, she was like a force of nature. And, and I, I you know. I used to go on the road with her. I oh, still yeah. remember her calling me in that fucking town, uh, Corpus Christi. We yeah. did a, uh, a Mexican drug dealer's bar. <laughs> and and they paid me and her well. And then we went up to my hotel room and she called me like an hour later. She goes, mm -hmm. Joey, did he give you Coke? And I go, no. He goes, she's looking for you. He gave me like an ounce of Coke. And he's looking for you. He wants to give you a bag of Coke, too. I said, let me call you right back. <laughs> I went right downstairs, took the bag of Coke from the owner, and then went up to Put the bat signal Marilyn's in the sky. Room. You got to find this motherfucker. Because we, me and Marilyn got caught doing all those Mexican oh. rooms together. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were going on the road together. Did he know yeah, he was because, a drug dealer at the time? Huh? Did he know he was a drug dealer already? We had an oh. idea. All those gigs in South Texas... All those had an idea. gigs in those days. It was crazy because they put you and Marilyn together because you were the two dirtiest, dirtiest out there. Comics out and nobody there. wanted to follow either of yeah, you. Yeah, so they just said put them together. Yeah. Me, her, and Jeff Garcia would go on the road yeah, a and, lot. And she would do like, Jeff open, was like her little son. Like her little son. Yeah. 
But I'll never forget, Lee, you would have dug her. Okay, like her and I had to go somewhere one time, <laughs> like San Antonio for a one night. And I wasn't hip to this. I'm not hip to this. Even today, I learn from people. You know, you go on the road. What, what, what do you do? You bring your clothes. You bring your toenail polish, yeah. right? Your blow dryer. This bitch showed up in her room with a cooler the size of this table. Her and her husband were carrying it in like a body. From fucking. the airport? No. They, no, they, they would like, drive. They would drive everywhere. They drove everywhere. Everywhere. If you had to go to Jersey, yeah. they would meet you in Jersey. <laughs> they would As you got off the out. plane, they were fucking They driving. were pulling up. <laughs> they were pulling up. And they'd have a cooler. Well, I'm not, not exaggerating. It was half the yeah. length of this table. It was one of those old igloos. Oh, the, yeah, the, the, the red with the, the red one. Yeah, yeah. And, they, dad would, has and yeah. they would carry it into the room. And in that bag, like, that's how they saved money. I never <laughs> knew about saving money. Like, they were a couple that weren't rich and they were frugal. Mm -hmm. But they, they were proud to be frugal because they shared with you. Yeah. So in that thing was 2,000 pounds worth of food. Tamales, peanuts, mm -hmm. licorice. Fucking sodas, yep. diet sodas, waters. That she call you and go, John, wait, come on over to my room. We have snacks, and you go over there and you felt, you felt the weird. Like I was talking about Kentucky last night. How people? That's what you felt like. Yeah, like they smuggled drugs with them on this road trip, and they were sharing them with you. Yeah. She had the biggest heart in the she world. Had, she she was, was just fucking... she loved and cared. I mean, she would lose it on you, but goddamn, when she when her heart was there, I mean, there was this. Uh, she called. She visited me in Phoenix when I was when I was visiting my parents, and you know, like with you calling and yelling cocksucker into the phone, I wasn't home. The phone the phone rings. My dad picks it up. My old man sounds like me on the phone. He's like, "Hello," and she goes, "Baby cocksucker." <laughs> And my dad just pauses for a minute and goes, yeah, baby cocksucker's not here right now. This is daddy cocksucker. <laughs> and she was just like, um, 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 I'm just like, she was fucking great. They met her later that night. She dug a hole even deeper for herself. She was like, I, I call him baby cocksucker because we have a friend, Joey Diaz, and he's he's cocksucker. And and David is telling her, just shut the fuck up. You know, it's just, she, didn't give a yeah, fuck. she didn't give a fuck. She was she was wonderful, you know, and and it was like, she, she, she was my first friend in L.A. Yeah, when the Latino Loco Slam flew me in from Seattle mm -hmm. to showcase here, and I pocketed the money and just drove with my friend Rod Long. <laughs> me and Rod Long and drove to this. We pocketed the money they gave me yeah. for the flight and the hotel, and I stayed. <laughs> and you want me to tell you something? You want me to tell you where I stayed? Where'd you stay? Maybe four blocks from here, from really? right, this office. When I first came to LA to showcase for Latino Laugh Festival, I stayed close to the Japanese restaurant. We went to the Japanese restaurant mm -hmm. where they jump up and down on the tables mm -hmm. on Lancashire. Yeah. What's the name of that place? I don't know. It's, it's a sushi place, yeah. Yeah, the sushi's horrifically mm -hmm. bad. Like it's terrible. Yeah. But they jump on the table and they and they, they, they fucking uh the waiters uh karaoke on the table. You never took your mother to Lee? No, I've heard cause I've heard about it, but there's a we like there's like only a couple seatings and you always have to wait in right, line you outside because there's a show. Yeah. You see the line Can't have that Lancashire. Yeah. No. I went there the first time. That was my first dinner <laughs> in Los Angeles, and then we stayed by the YMCA. Mm -hmm. In between those things, the guy I still see him, his name is Cal. <laughs> he was a longtime writer on Mad T V. And I see him at the Y, still today. Once a year, I bump into his kids, go to the YMCA, so I bump into him there. But that's where I stayed, the same neighborhood. That's It's so weird. It's so weird. Yeah, you don't, get, you don't ever get away from it, you know? No, and I went down to Hollywood, and I was at the Latino Laugh Factory, standing there, shitting my pants off yeah. at the Laugh Factory for Latino on a Monday night, 1996. Yeah, 96, 97, somewhere and around I, there. And she came up to me. She goes, you joined the end. I'm from Denver. And mm hmm Colorado Spring Pueblo, but that's what bonded the two of you because yeah. that cocksucker drove you, drove both of you guys crazy. He treated you like shit. He wouldn't give you the spot, right? He, he would tell you, "You guys are too dirty." You were young comics, so you kind of took it seriously. And the bottom, and then line he was, and then he did a dirty show anyway. Okay, so the first year of the Latino Laugh Festival belonged to the dead comic. Mm -hmm. God bless his soul. Greg Geraldo. Okay. It was a setup for Greg Geraldo. Greg Geraldo mm -hmm. got the special mm -hmm. and the TV show from the Latino Laugh Festival. So the second year grew bigger. Yeah. So his tentacles reached out. Mm -hmm. So I'm in fucking Seattle. 
I'm on stage. I ain't bothering nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Night before mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, we're doing a big show. Me, Josh Wolf, Gavin, Brody, mm -hmm. Tana Manu, you know, the, whoever. Kelly Moran, we're doing this huge show. And after the show, uh, Ron Reed comes up to me and goes, Hey, man, Jeff Valdez in the audience. He wants to talk to you. So he goes, you're perfect for my show. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. We love you. We're going to fly you down there. We're going to call you. He called, but it was five months later. Yeah. And he, they flew me down. I came down, did the showcase. And I was first. They don't the put you for yeah, factory yeah. on a fucking Monday night. Yeah. So I died. A, I ate a bag of dicks. Yeah. I got back in the fucking car. I, I drove back to Seattle. Forgot. I wasn't, you know, it was yeah. my first time. I didn't really expect anything, but I did. Mm -hmm. My feelings were a little hurt. Yeah, you, Your feelings get just a little hurt. And then I just went back to the drawing board. And then they called again the second year. Yeah. And they wanted to tape this time. Mm -hmm. And I went to all extents. Like, I borrowed money to put this tape together. Yeah. And I sent it, and they signed for it on a Wednesday. And on Thursday, my manager called. Whoever, Ron Reed called. Yeah. I didn't even have a manager. I was still in Seattle. And they said, no, can do too dirty for our festival. Yeah. If he cleans it up next year, we'll take a look at him. The situation sped up. I move here. Yeah. I meet Marilyn. Me and Marilyn connect. Latino Laugh Factory showcase. We showcase at the comedy store when the guy ran Latino night on some Sunday nights and he made you wear a suit with a tie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's Joey Diaz. This he is pulled me over. I had to go to that secondhand store on Melrose and buy like a tuxedo and shit like oh, that. Wow. A white shirt. Fucking so insane. the showcase comes up. They showcase us. They love us. The only problem, we're too dirty. Yeah. We're going to showcase you again Monday night at the Latino Laugh Factory. At the, <coughs> at the Monday night. Me and Marilyn go down there. They showcase us again. Yeah. Now, guys, I'm telling you about you being a, a young comic. You're not looking to become a millionaire or to be a star. You're just looking for the first step. You just want the shot. Yeah. You just want the shot. Okay, guys? So I show up for the second show. This is the third year in a row I'm showcasing. Now they told me I'm too dirty to work my set clean. Mm -hmm. So I cleaned it up as much as I could. I took all the fucks out of it and anything in that range out of it. I think I, think I said a shit, and they said no, no shit, okay? Which was crazy because it was showtime. Okay, and then we you went know? back to fucking the comedy store, and they showcased us again. And they said, we still don't know. Me and Marilyn were fucking mm -hmm. livid. And then we ended up going to the improv on like a, a Wednesday night and mm -hmm. they showcase me and Marilyn and the rule is not one fucking curse word. Don't say not even, uh, what's the heck? Hell? Hell, don't say nothing. We want the thing to be TV fucking clean. And we worked it. I mean, guys, you know how hard it was for me? Oh, yeah. To do fucking seven minutes spotless clean at huh. that time. It was torture, but I did it. Was the set funny? Was it going to get me an HBO special? No. That didn't matter. I just wanted to be a part of a festival, blah, 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 blah. Okay. He strings us out to the week before or two weeks before mm -hmm. the festival. Then he cancels me in Maryland. He goes, no no go this year. But then the following week, he does something. And I don't know how this feels to you people, but this is how it felt to me. Mm -hmm. He added a blue to show on Saturday night in San Antonio. The midnight show at that time was a blue show, mm -hmm. which means it's a triple X show. So they added that to the festival yeah. and still didn't invite me in Maryland. That's a fuck you. That that's was, how I would look at that. I mean, that, there's no way, you know. I mean, this is a guy who and he was fucking with you guys. So once he said this, all went down on a Friday. I know for a fact that little chubby Mexican, her feelings were hurt. Yeah. My feelings were hurt. But I kept it together. I knew the animal I was dealing with. And I knew how the attitude was going to be from now on with these fucking douchebags. Personally, and I tell you this right here on this podcast, if anybody knows or talks to her, I was not mad at Pat Buckles at all. No. I love Pat Buckles today more than what I did back then. Mm -hmm. So it might be, and even though I haven't seen him in three years, I had no beef with Pat Buckles at the time. She was the casting director of the Latino Laugh Factory, mm -hmm. the festival. Yeah. So for us to do, she made us do a clean set, and then the week before the festival, they throw a Midnight Blue on, Latino style. Yeah. And it was three dirt, clean comics working dirty. Which is not. So I was 
over it. Like, I was over it that week. It took me a night of snorting cocaine and maybe bumping into a victim, and I was over it. I never repeated it to nobody. I was not angry, nothing. That doesn't even make sense. Doesn't make fucking sense. Now, we go to the comedy store Sunday night. Me and Marilyn giggle it mm-hmm. off. Yeah. We have a few drinks. We go up. She goes home. Monday, we go down there for the open mic. Who do you think is down there walking around like Johnny LaBamba? Jeff Valdez. Cool. Because there was some type of music show yeah. across the street at the House of Blues. So he walked in there like a fucking mafia leader with some other, with somebody else. They walked in there super cool. And you know what, man? Was it uh, that fucker that, that always got, the, that always got was, the business deal with? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He walked in with like two other dudes, and he walked in super cool. And I caught him coming out, and I said, hey, man, so you added a fucking dirty show? And you didn't have us, and he 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 made he said something, guys. I didn't know what he said, so I left it alone. I wasn't angry. I just knew the fucking animal I was dealing with, and that was it. Yeah. Now that was it. A year later, they're talking about the Latino Laugh Festival. My phone doesn't ring. I'm happy. Boom! I get a call. You're in the festival. Yeah. No showcase. No nothing. Say what you want. Do what you want. <laughs> The damage was already done. So, I know who this motherfucker is, but this is the funniest out of all the stories. So, he calls me one day. Remember when he was giving out TV shows? Yeah. He, was giving, he put Marilyn on the show with, mm-hmm. with, with, with little crazy kids. Him and uh, her and Armando. Armando Casillo. And, and uh, yeah, they were they were like a bunch of bunch of white kids in the barrio, and they right. had to survive down there. Right. That's the, you know, yeah, I remember that. He paid Marilyn peanuts. Fuck yeah. He paid Marilyn Peanuts. They sold this show. I get a call from him one day. They want to do something. And by this time, you know, you've had it with somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, you're like, I really don't want to do business with you. They call me for something. I swear to God, they're like, listen, we'll give you $50. And I go, you know what, man? It's not even about the $50. I could use that $50 more than anybody in the world right now. <laughs> I ain't working with you. Thank you. And I hung up. And they called back. And they go, what would it take? Like, he knew. Yeah. That I had this certain attitude about him, about me, that I didn't want to, like, that's it. I was over it. You know what? We're even. So what? You came back and gave me a Latino Laugh Festival. Like, you tried to make it up. I still know the type of person that you are. Yeah. So he gave me, and you know I never talk about money on this show. Mm-hmm. He gave me 50 bucks the offer, and when I told him to go fuck yeah. themselves, they called me back and they gave me a 1000 for the same thing. And <laughs> it was a tape recording that's on YouTube today. Yeah. Remember they had CTV? Yeah, I remember that. It was a show for CTV, and somebody cut it, and it's on YouTube today. I got to see that. Huh? It was like an interview, and they gave me a 1000 bucks, which, Jesus Christ, that was the car payment three months. Yeah. That was the Coke dealer. I was behind the month with the Coke dealer. You know, that was like fucking gigantic fucking money in 2002. 2002, yeah. 2002 yeah. or three. So I kept them a distance, and then they scheduled the big Latino Laugh Festival for downtown LA. No, Hollywood. Remember the theater on on the Ricardo Montalban Theater. Yes, yeah. the Ricardo Montalban Theater. Yeah, yeah, and something. I forgot about that. So now they were charging fifty dollars tickets, right? But they were making offers that they would send a car to come get you. Since it was a festival, they weren't going to pay you. Yeah. They're doing theaters, Lee, and they weren't going to pay you. But they'll give you a ride there. They'll mm. give you a ride there. They'll send yeah. This is way before Uber. They had a car service. <laughs> and I kept saying no. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not doing it. I don't care what money. It, it, then they kept, Then they would throw money at you. Okay, how about $100? Not really. How about 200 in a ride? How about 225 in a ride? And I goes, <laughs> you know what? Not really. And guess what happened the day of the show? George Lopez... Rudy Moreno and somebody else canceled yeah. because they knew, they knew this guy was robbing from them. They yeah. all woke up and go, "Wait a second, what are we doing? Yeah, we're doing a five thousand seat theater for free for the name of the Latino Laugh Festival, which means Jeff Valdez's pocket." So now they fucking lost. They backfired on him. So that was it. Everybody was even now. I remember that. Everybody's even now. Fuck everybody. Everybody's even. Jeff is cool, blah, blah, blah is cool. But then something else happened, and it was something with Marilyn and him. 
something about money at the end he owed it for two shows and he said the two shows weren't gonna sell yeah. and i did you know what Marilyn, you know when people call you ever have that girlfriend that keeps getting beat up by the same boyfriend yeah and she calls you every week i'm gonna leave him and after Marilyn 10 years, yeah after 10 years you finally one day go you know what ben when you leave him call me <laughs> and hung up on him it was one of those fucking deals yeah. where Marilyn had had it with him when that process Marilyn fucking gets cancer and then six months later, she fucking died. I remember that. So they have this big thing for her. And now, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to go into details, but there was people, there was certain people who said they were going to pay for her funeral. But if a certain other person was there, he wouldn't pay for the funeral. And when the yeah, guy showed it. up, it got really fucking ghetto-ish. Yeah. So I came back from New York, which was this weekend. I went to do a benefit for a Hoboken police department, mm -hmm. which they fucking booed me and hated me. And then I had to do a benefit. For, oh, my God. It was in back because there were undercover cops. I'm talking about drugs. Yeah. And they were making believe like they didn't know what I was talking about. Like, oh. And I finally go, you fucking bad guys crazy or what? You guys thought more blow than I do. Knock it off. And then uh, I did something for the high school basketball yeah. team. And then I came back. I stayed sober that whole week weekend. Yeah, the whole weekend something was up in my world. Like I'm like I, can't, I gotta stop doing drugs. <laughs> and boom, that Saturday Marilyn died. I fucking knew it. I gotta get the fuck done. Thank God I'm not getting high. But I came home, and then that Tuesday, I had to go to Kempo Karate mm -hmm. in in uh, Silver Lake, wherever I used to go. Yeah. By the restaurant food. That's when you used to with the brothers. Yes, <laughs> with the brothers down there. And I fucking went. Instead of going over there, I was pissed because I didn't go to... The wake? To, no, I was pissed because I didn't go to Kung Fu. Oh, okay. Instead, I went to the church. Oh, God, yeah, morning. I remember that. I remember and that. as I was getting in my car, I saw Jeff Valdez there, and my demeanor changed. No, you, you were... You as were I got in the car, I saw that motherfucker there, and I go, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. After all the shit you put us through, you have the audacity to show up at the wake. And I weighed, and I didn't say nothing. As I was leaving, four people that were her, like, kind of enemies were walking in. Yeah. I didn't say a fucking word. <laughs> you held it together. That was I the got, funeral. Yeah. That you was, kept it together I, for the funeral. I went to the funeral, and I kept it together, but I left early. Yeah. I could feel the kiss of death well, coming I could over feel, me. I could tell that you were pissed. Yeah. I could, I could see the kiss of death coming over mm. me. And I was sober. For like five or six days. This was day number six. Oh. I hadn't snorted no coke. Somebody was going to die. Somebody was going to die. I had not done drugs. This was the longest I was ever sober from the time I went to prison. Six days. Mm. And I was ready to crack. And I, all I wanted to do was take a sleeping pill. I, was I think in those days I would drink uh, half of the bottles of night mm -hmm. guys. Yeah. So for me to fall, that's the only way I could beat that addiction in the, in the beginning. I would have to get a bottle of NyQuil mm -hmm. and drink half of it one night yeah. and half of it the other, so I'd pass out good. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to wake up at 7 in the morning and snort coke. That's never going to happen. So it would be another night. Whew, I would wake up and go, oof. You beat Thank it. God we yeah. got that NyQuil tonight. <laughs> so for a week, I, I just drank NyQuil to, to make me fucking pass yeah. out. And that night, I, was, I said, you know what? I'm not going to fucking stay clean. There's no way I'm going to yeah, stay you didn't. clean. You didn't fuck up until after the after the incident, right? No, I didn't fuck up at all. Here's the deal. I fucking said, you know what? I'm going to go buy some Coke and come home, and that's it. Who, who the fuck am I kidding? I'm never going to stay sober. That's never going to fucking happen. And a friend of mine called, and she goes, bro, are you going to Maryland's thing? And I, I really don't want to go down there. Yeah. And she didn't understand what I was. I didn't want to tell her, listen, if I go down there, I'm going to snort Coke. Yeah. So let me not go down there and not snort coke and let me stay here in my fucking house. Hmm. And I remember I fucking, she goes, you have to go. You have to go. You cannot not go. She was your friend. You have to go. And she put me together and I was angry. And on the way there, I stopped by the fucking Martel cartel mm -hmm. and I bought a gram of blow. I said, I'm going to take some blow to this motherfucker. Yeah. And I went in there and I'll never forget that as I was going in. There was a kid that kept trying to do something like a project. Yeah. And he kept trying to call me, and there was no money involved, and I didn't yeah. have the balls to tell him, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. That night at the bar, before yeah. I went into that room, he was there. And he's like, hey, man, 
I've been trying to call you for months. I go, get the fuck away from me. I don't want to do your shitty fucking thing, all right? <laughs> and right there, I knew it. I knew somebody was going to get stabbed or something. I didn't know who. I knew I was <laughs> angry. I was angry about her dying. I was angry about not doing blow for yeah. six or seven days. I was angry about a lot of shit, you know? And next thing you know, I walked in that room, and there was food in the back. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Do you yeah. remember? They moved the tables around the main mm -hmm. room, mm -hmm. and there was food in the back. Yeah. And as I went back there to get something to eat, I saw Jeff Valdez again, guys. Mm. And my temperature went from zero to 60. Mm. Like everything bad that ever happened to me <laughs> in my life was about to go down. And I remember walking out and going to the bar, and I never drink at 8 o'clock at night, yeah. especially without a line of Coke. I went in there, and I got a doers on the rocks. And I drank it, and I was so angry, I could feel the doers going into my tongue. Mm -hmm. Like, guys, I don't know how angry. And it was the manifestation of the sorrow. Yeah. That's all it was. I was I was manifesting. Marilyn was our dead mother. She I, took care of us she in took so care many care ways. We, I, uh, Thanksgiving, oh we needed God. a place to stay. I mean, she was there. She was there. So it was just something really weird. But something happened that September. On a Sunday, when she got out of the hospital after she had all the surgeries for cancer, she was at her house, and they were yeah. trying to tape a documentary. Yeah, some people were over there. That was people that were not going right. to, you know. But yeah, we went over there, and they were trying to shoot a documentary. And I sat next to her on that little cancer bed. It was one yeah. of those hospital beds. Yeah, she it was in the front room. It was right? in the front room. The cats were there. Yeah, the fucking TV was on. And she was not in the room, guys. I mean, it was really sad. Like when you could walk into a room and your best friend is lying on a bed. Yeah. But you could see that something's not right. And we were talking. Like, well, how are you feeling? And she was telling me that uh, if God help her beat this, that she would go on stage and never be blue again. That that was her biggest mistake and that was her biggest sin. That she would never work dirty again, never say another word. And I'm like looking at her going, so I'll never hear cocksucker from you. And she looked at me like stern, like, yeah, I'm not fucking around. Like, yeah. And as we were talking, and I've told you this, yeah. right? As yeah. we were talking, we were talking about something about, well, I'm going to have another surgery on Wednesday. And then if that works out, I'm going to come out and go to this place over here. They got a big fucking tamale. That talk, like that. She, when she was talking to me that day, she was talking to me about food. Like, I could really go for a big fucking pork taco from around the corner over there. Yeah. And in the middle of the conversation, she goes, Joey, you have to stop doing coke. Like, she just said that out of nowhere. And every, my, everything stopped. And I told her, you know what, you're right. And she goes, no, you have to stop. She goes, God wants you to stop doing coke. And I was like, this ain't good, man. That's yeah. a fucking message. She's never told me that. She used to hold my Coke. Yeah. With that whole Whitney Houston thing, that's who had my Coke. It was Marilyn. I was giving her an eight ball a day. Marilyn had like 28 grams of the house at one fucking time. And she goes, when are you going to sell this? I'm not saying that. I'm selling this for a big fucking party. You know? <laughs> and she goes, what type of party is this, Joey? You got to stop doing that shit. But she never really. I remember calling that night going, bring me the Coke. What do you got to do with it? <laughs> I'm going to fucking do it. All of it. <laughs> you can't, Joey. What about Terry? Don't worry about Terry. <laughs> and so it's just weird that this connection, it was Marilyn, Ralphie, you know. Yeah. It was such a weird connection, and now we're here alone. But, but you still remember her, mm -hmm. and nobody called me. Nobody said nothing to me about Marilyn's 10th anniversary. I was creepy about it the last few days, just on my own. I found a picture. And I put it in my little fucking uh, spirit altar. I got the little um, folder with her on the, you know, where it's red with the roses around her. And yeah, she's wearing that yeah. red dress that she wears. The red dress. And, and, you know, I I look at it every once in a while. I'm she's the like, one that talked us into Weight Watchers. Yeah. <laughs> she got us down there. Jerry, I went to Weight Watchers. You got to see how much weight I'm losing. Look at this dress. I fit in my dress again. <laughs> I remember, fucking crazy, I remember guys. her and you standing out there, and this is when you used to just love to, to show your balls. Remember, you you would wear those pants, and they would just start. She would be talking, and everybody'd be standing around, and she'd be talking, and the pants would start slipping and slipping and slipping, <laughs> and we're losing our shit. And all of a sudden, she'll just look up. Oh, Joey, put that fucking thing away, Harvey Weinstein Jr. <laughs> she would say some fucked up shit to people. <sighs> We got a ticket one night. I mean, we went, we did, uh, guys, I got to be on, it, it, when you do comedy sometimes, you pick your friends and yeah. you just start doing these gigs together. Mm. 
and the gigs suck, but you have so much fun because it's your friend and they're no pressure gigs. Like my gigs now are pressure gigs. Yeah. I got to produce, guys. Yeah. Those are pressure gigs. No pressure gigs. Nobody gives a fuck. You get a quick hundred dollars, three drink tickets, and a dinner, and you're like, and it doesn't you, matter. And then what it's happens. you and you and her breaking Rudy's balls. <laughs> you <laughs> would live to break Rudy's we'd, balls. We go down there together and yeah. destroy his fucking Rudy Moreno. <laughs> was the guy that used. To, <laughs> Rudy Moreno used to book the Commerce Casino. He also booked the bar, the Commerce Casino. <laughs> Is a gambling joint off mm -hmm. the five? Off the five, yeah. Oh, off by the, the five. Citadel. Over by the Citadel, yeah. Uh, it's about 20 minutes from here, to be yeah. honest. It's quick for me. I leave one a couple times. <laughs> you, every time you go play in there, you're fucking scared shitless. Because it's really owned by like some mob. Yeah, it's... How I know, because my friend is Filipino, <laughs> and she applied for a job in there, and she didn't take it. Yeah. They're fucking savages, those oh, I, Filipinos. And she told me, she goes, no, 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 no. This is, <laughs> this is, this is mob stuff. <laughs> And they got the best Chinese menu. That's yeah. where it's good. They it's got good all spot. types of food in there yeah. of the Asian. But fucking mm -hmm. the Chinese food is fucking good down there. And I don't go down there. You understand me? That's how <laughs> it's fucked up down there. But he used to book that room for the small yard stick every Thursday. Yeah. He was getting 8000 a week. And he would yeah. pay three comics $100. Yeah. And he would clean up fucking hilarious shit. He would run this other room, the Brave Bull. They had like That's three where she comedy caused a, rooms. Didn't she cause a riot in there one time? Yes, she caused a riot. <laughs> this was a place that had like bull, bull horns on the yeah. wall mm -hmm. and shit, and they had three rooms. I'm sitting here laughing, but you guys know I give a lot of credit about some. If it wasn't for Rudy Moreno in those days, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Because Rudy Moreno, as in those days, paid me every... There was a six-month stretch that me and him just had a mutual agreement. Yeah. I'm coming down Friday and Saturday. And I would play whatever room he had. Sometimes he'd have the big room down there. Sometimes he'd have the medium yeah. room. The big room had like a dead moose in the thing. <laughs> I remember doing it with Pablo Francisco, 1997. And then he had like a, but his best room was this back room. And it looked like a wedding room yeah. on the East Coast. But it was a set. They had a set with flowers and stuff like that around the stage and people. But this was a weird Mexican crowd. And Marilyn went up there one night and said something, and the wife said something, and the guy threw a chair, and the other. Now, this is Rudy Moreno's baby. To know Rudy is to love him. Rudy is a gentleman. He wears glasses. He's by the book. Mm -hmm. He wants you to wear a certain shirt. And he would always break mine and Marilyn's balls until we basically told him to go fuck yourself. Watch, we'll make it work. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be dirty. Don't be dirty in here. People don't like when you're dirty. Watch us. And me and Marilyn proved to him <laughs> that they like dirty comedy. Yeah, we didn't give a fuck what he told us. He wasn't the comedy store. He's a great comic, Rudy, but he wasn't the fucking comedy store. And he wasn't going to run our careers. These are bars. Yeah. This isn't fucking a church. These are bars. What are you going to a bar to do? To have a few drinks and loosen up and look good for your friends? No. He's like, you got to work clean. And me and Marilyn would go up on stage and he'd be back there giving us the light. Like, like <laughs> knock it off. Like, get off. It off. <laughs> and I wouldn't fucking get off. I would stay up there for another 10 minutes and go fucking crazy up there. <laughs> Fuck you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Suck my dick. And I would see him back there turning red and pacing and shit. And, but they'd be laughing. Yeah. And he, then when you come off, he's like, Jesus Christ, Joey, you gave me a heart attack back there. That's some of the dirtiest stuff I've ever heard. I go, Rudy, they're fucking laughing. It doesn't matter. That's all that matters. So he went on back and forth with us for about a year. He would torment me and fucking Marilyn. So one weekend, he takes his road gig, and that's the weekend Marilyn decides to go up to the Brain Bull on a Saturday night and have an argument with a guy. I will never forget this story. I was not there. I just heard there was chairs This flying, story is fucking legendary. And there's eight people on the floor wrestling, and the two wives are pulling each other's hair, and Marilyn's on stage like a narrator, like Joe Rogan. <laughs> fucking dale, dale. She couldn't even speak Spanish and shit. So she says she got paid and shit. <laughs> Omaha paid her. Omaha oh got hit. Larry Omaha head. paid her. Somebody, <laughs> Omaha, this guy, Larry Omaha, that's a brilliant comic, a great writer. He got hit, and I guess he paid Marilyn. You know, Rudy yeah. left him in charge. Mm -hmm. But Marilyn says, let me tell you something. Sunday morning, 9 01. <laughs> she got the rings, call. And it was Rudy. 
Marilyn, what happened? Rudy, let me tell you. <laughs> Marilyn, I told you we were clean in there. It wasn't because I was dirty. <laughs> and to do with that, some guy threw a chair. And they threw a fucking chair. One doubt it. She was, she was a hurricane of craziness. She didn't care. Uh, at the Wild Coyote, she started fights in there. Remember, she told some guy... She, she started making fun of this guy's girlfriend. She went back at him. The boyfriend said something, and then she was like, you know what? I thought you were kind of cute. I was going to offer to suck your dick, but you probably just got out of jail, and it tastes like shit. And it's just like... <laughs> And we're all standing around like, oh, fuck, we're all going to get killed tonight, you know? And David's sitting there like, fuck. I was doing a gig with her, this shit gig in um, Lubbock, Texas, somewhere near down. I don't know where the fuck we were. But we're doing this gig, and we get there. And Marilyn, Alex Ramundo, and I are all sitting around bullshitting, and she's breaking our balls about how we're a couple of pussies, and if we go to her room, she's got a strap on, and she'll fuck us both in the ass. And she's just saying all kinds of crazy shit, right? So, and she's doing this out on the patio with, with families and shit around, right? So, she goes into her room. I go into my room. Alex is in his room. I get a phone call maybe maybe seven minutes later. She's like, Rick, you got to come over here and help me. You got to come over here. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And she was like, there was a guy next door who was listening to us. And he said that I could come over there and I could fuck him in the ass with that strap. <laughs> I've called David and now he's mad at me because he's told me about talking dirty. You got to get me out of here. <laughs> I had to go to the front desk, get her another room, move her. It was fucking great. That's funny because I was with her in the bowels of hell, Midland, Texas. Yeah. No disrespect. That's the club, Lee, where the DA rated it. But the first time I went to that oh club, God. I went to Maryland. Yeah. And they put us in a hotel that had a pool, and we were around the pool. Yeah. And somebody tried to break into a room to fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> He was 300 pounds, four foot eight Maryland. This burglar didn't know what he was doing. This is going to be the first rapist in history that was going to kick the door down and go, I don't think so. He was going to run out of there. Marilyn was 300 pounds with oh, a lay in there with a bag of fucking chocolate, three different sizes. Like she would, you know those Halloween bags? Right. Yeah. She would take them on the road with her. And at night, she, you go to her room, and she had all four bags on the bed. Wait, they have them when it's not Halloween time? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The little ones. For little chubbies and, like Marilyn. And then yeah. she's like, justify it. Each one is three points. <laughs> okay? I fucking ate. I, listen, don't fucking say a fucking word, all right? I only ate two of each. They're three points for two. I walked 40 minutes on the fucking thing, the machine there. My foot fucking hurts. Look at my ankles. <laughs> They're turning purple, Joey. She would have four different types of chocolate. She was four foot eight, 300 pounds. And the rapist was knocking down her door, and she's in there. What the fuck? She's laying on the door. The rapist is on the other side. He was an escaped convict out of all the rooms in the hotel. He decides to break into me. Can you imagine breaking out of jail for a piece of ass? <laughs> and, it's and it's Marilyn Martinez, four foot eight, 300 pounds. What would you do? Oh, what God. the fuck do you do? <laughs> Take the first bus back. And to she's prison. calling me. <laughs> this whole weekend was crazy. And when we'd go, oh for some reason, she had a great line to promoters. <laughs> promoters always called her from mm -hmm. all over the country. I, I got you know, I tell you guys how it is with comedy. For you people who are interested. When you get here, yes, there's an upper montage of comedy. There's the comedy store, the improv, the laugh factory, mm -hmm. and they're all great clubs. And then you have a lower end of clubs in Silver Lake, which are just mm -hmm. bars. And then one night is you get two dollars to yeah. the room, maybe a drink, maybe a beer, get, yeah, maybe a beer. You get nothing. And this is how it is for a few years. But the I, this is why I give credit to these little Mexican guys. That's why I've had them on the show, from Willie to Felipe, mm -hmm. all these guys that you hear today. 20 years ago, these guys hustled. Nobody fucking liked these guys. Yeah. Nobody gave them spot. We think Felipe was doing the improv and all this shit before Last Comic Standing? No. Felipe and his buddy Willie and Jeff Garcia mm -hmm. and Rudy Moreno and all these guys, for all you guys that are sitting there in our town going, I want to do comedy, but I don't know what to do. Well, let me tell you what these guys did. Yeah. <clears throat> they went to all those C little fucking gangster rooms where there's a possibility of getting shot or stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> and they went in there, and I'm telling you, and Rick knows. Rick knows. I played him. I made knows. my bones in those rooms. We made our bones in those rooms because they gave you 35 bucks. Mm -hmm. And these guys were such hustlers. They'd have three rooms in one night at yeah. one time. At one time, I can honestly look at all four of you in the room and tell you, I was pulling down anywhere from five to 600 a week 
in 2001 in this yeah. town, I was pulling down 600 a week doing stand up in this town. That's 24 fucking hundred a month. You know what? You guys like Joey, that's not no money. Let me tell you something. You're living your dream. Mm -hmm. 2400 you get an apartment in Reseda with three yeah. fucking guys. You make a $150 car payment, and you pay back your student loans. You're good to go unless yeah. you got a drug habit. Unless you got a drug habit. You can live on 600 a week yeah. if you live, if you Frugally. don't have 20 girlfriends, yeah. and if you don't do blow, and if you could conserve weed, you can live in, the, in fucking Sherman Oaks mm -hmm. with three other guys, pay 850 a fucking month. You know, two bedrooms. One guy sleeps in the closet. Yeah. But that's where you got to. That's where you got to start off. When those rooms went under, not to mention, but six hundred was also ten spots, guys. Yeah. So it averages about sixty dollars a spot. I'm not gonna tell you. You're that. working for it. You're working. You're for driving it. for it. And you know, yeah, yeah, gas is included. Yeah. So let's get something straight. It was six hundred minus a yardstick mm -hmm. for gas, ten dollars for parking. Yeah. You know, it's that kind of stuff. But you had money coming in. That means your corporation was always so t Monday. Like, okay, what's tonight? Tuesday. Right, Tuesday. Last night I would last night I would have a spot at the Laugh Factory for mm -hmm. twenty five bucks. Yeah. But before that spot or after that spot, I would go up to Universal City on Mondays. And the Rumba Room. Do, do the Rumba Room for forty bucks. Yeah. And then Tuesday I would wake up. Mm -hmm. Do the comedy store, even mm -hmm. though there was nobody there because yeah. it was African American night. Mm -hmm. So the original room would be dead. And yeah. that was 15 bucks, and then somebody had a $40 room. Casa Latina. Casa Latina had the, a $40 The nice young room. black yeah. dude. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else had a later Tuesday. I had the that, Sapphire on Tuesday. You had the yeah, Sapphire I would pay you, I'd pay you anywhere between 15 75 on There that. you go. Uh-huh. So you had Wednesday night was like... Uh, oh, uh, Wednesday was Wild Coyote. Wild Coyote. Wild Wednesday and Saturday was, was Wild, Wild Coyote. Coyote yeah. Which was a small 40 mm -hmm. bucks and a burrito. Yeah. A fucking good burrito. A though. real good burrito. God and damn. then Thursday, you had Commerce Casino. Mm -hmm. I still go back with Gabriel booking the Bicycle Club oh, wow. for the small $35 yeah. in 1997. Gabriel, so all these Latin comics built their own underground network. They didn't yeah. even step foot in the fucking comedy club. No, they, they wouldn't even bother. They with wouldn't the even bother because they knew they weren't going to fucking. Huh. The only club that gave them love was the Laugh Factory. Mm -hmm. And that Latin room still fucking rocks. Yeah, it still does. I remember it was it was Chris Martinez, Jeff Garcia ran it for a while. Everybody had it at one point, and it was just like, it was a great room. And it was a packed house, and they they fucking lived for comedy. The, the comedy store didn't give us love. The improvs didn't give us love. Maybe you might get something in Ontario or Brea, which were great rooms, but they weren't going to give you. Fuck! It was. They might give you a Wednesday. They might they give you a Tuesday. Wednesday. Yeah, yeah they think it was Wednesday. You know? But no, no, and you'd have to paper the room. It was a different fucking game. But you I know see. what? I don't. I I thank Rudy. Mm -hmm. And all those, you know, that's why I've had Willie on the podcast multiple times yeah. with Felipe, because when I got here, they were putting forty dollars a week in my pocket. Yeah. That's a buck sixty. Because at the end of the week it all went into a comb and it added up at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And you'd sit there at the end of the month and go, I'm broke, but you're really not broke. <coughs> you are making an okay living. It's not fucking you're doing comedy here a year. What do you expect? Yeah. God forbid you book a commercial. Oh, oh my, my God! God yeah. Oh, book a day on a fucking TV show mm -hmm. for scale, six fifty. God damn it! I'm going for sushi, baby. Hell yeah! I'm going for sushi, baby. You're gonna spend. You're gonna have a good time. You feel like Fuck. a fucking human being for a little bit. It's great. But then there's months when there's dick. Like there's months you look at your schedule, and there ain't yeah. dick on that schedule. Yeah. Like Dean Delray called me a month ago. He goes, "Man, this is tough being a professional comic." My whole December is wide open. I don't know how I'm going to make a living. I go, listen, that's what it is to be a professional. You yeah. look at that and you go, you know what? I'm going to believe in the Lord. I'm going to believe in myself. you got to have faith in yourself, yeah. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, you just start popping these gigs. And there were months when it'd be the 25th. Yeah. And I had no idea how I was coming up for rent money in six days. Not a fucking clue. I don't think, well... I'm going to get evicted. And all of a sudden, on the 30th, you get a call for a Halloween gig. They yeah. paid exactly what the rent is. And they gave you a check, which really fucked you up. <laughs> well, fuck it. I'll take it shit. I remember those days. I never had the faith to do that, though. I always had the job. I always had some shitty... Uh, uh, I was I was a substitute teacher at that time. It's in your blood. And it was, right? Yeah. It's, I was thinking about you tonight. How you never really... I didn't have faith in myself you like never that. Really, and you know, 
the faith of not having a job, it takes you to the next level. It does. What's what's the what's the movie that? There's a scene in one of the Anarchy movies. I think our what's our friend and fucking uh, what's our little friend? What's our family member down in here? That's keeping things on ice for us till January <laughs> down there in Austin. Bobby Sharon. Right. Okay. Crystal. His girlfriend put the clip up. Mm-hmm. Put uh, a, a clip up from Sons of Anarchy. You know what Sons of Anarchy? Uh, yeah. Okay, Sons of Anarchy. What was the, the season of the black guy? What was his name? The biker? The black biker gang boss? No, the other guy. The one that they shot in the fucking... Uh, they shot him in the in the thing when they they told him to meet. They were gonna give up Traeger. I remember his name. I remember. Put Jax Teller's meeting with and see what comes up. Okay. No, but you're right though. It was like you know. This is, like, this is no, no, no. I know it's right. No, no. I, I know. I always knew you had the talent. I always knew you had the balls. We worked together a lot of times. But the fear. You were comedy store trained. You were yeah. comedy store trained, which means you had you went through the SEAL program, which means that you really can't be scared. You got to believe in yourself. Jax Teller meets Mr. Mayhem. No. No, 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 no. no, no. Oh, I know that's a bad one. Yeah. Put on. Uh, Sons of Anarchy season six, I think. That's how season six started, right? He talks about uh, oof. Yeah, I don't remember now. We can't go through it. No, I can't. You know, but it's wrong. Yeah, there's a scene where he goes to see him, and he goes using pain. To get to the next level, yeah. that's what makes um, kings out of men. He goes, that's how you do it, and that's the same thing with what we do in a way. In a way, you have to put yourself against a wall to really grab the whatever. Yeah. I mean, you you were close. I would give you ear beatings about it on a constant. Oh level. yeah, yeah. Because and then you never saw it in that way. You saw it like I'm gonna miss something, and I get it. Listen, man, going through life without insurance and a bunch of things is a fucking American reality today. Mm -hmm. It's a scary reality. And uh, I got to look you in the eye and I got to look Lee in the eye and my little pal over there in the eye and tell you that, yeah, I'm grateful I did some movies and I'm grateful that I do stand-up, but I'm grateful I got SAG insurance, bitches. Yeah. Okay. I was not cut out to have insurance. I'm like, I'm never going to have insurance. I mean, I was just telling somebody, I'm automatically level two. I'm automatically level two because I've been sagged for more than 10 years and I'm over 45. Oh, yeah. So, you, so you're I'm, locked in? Yeah, I'm locked in. I don't oh. have to fight every month again. But I got to tell you something. The residuals cover level two. I still get, and every year I book like a guest star, mm-hmm. and then they always give me that other, they yeah. always pay you twice. Yeah. That twice makes me level two. See, that's the thing that always scared the shit out of me. And it's like, when I when I got into it, I thought to myself, well, you can go two, one of two ways. You can either go on the road and bust your ass on those shit gigs and get shit funny. Gigs, shit gigs. But shit by the gigs. time I got here in 2000, and I would have been I would have been able to do the road, a lot of that shit had dried up. So what would end up happening is that now you're paying for the flight. They don't always want to put you up. It's kind of crazy. And they're not giving you shit, in especially as world, a feature. In today's feature world, it's very tough. Like, a lot of times, if it's a local thing, if I could fight for a feature, mm-hmm. I don't bring a feature. Like, I don't bring it. If I go on the road 20 weeks, I bring a feature, maybe six or seven yeah. weeks. Because, like, there's a lot of clubs that it, I lose a 1000 bucks when yeah. I bring on a feature. If I was single and, and, and whatever, but yeah. I got a four-year-old, yeah, I can't just lose a thousand bucks because it's a hotel a room. week. Oh yeah, yeah. They, there's no more hotel so like, for one uh, they, one time. They want to, you know what they want to give this kid, right? You know, you want me to really embarrass you and tell you what they want to give him and look him in the eye, uh-huh. and I can't let that happen. No. Right? Like you came with me, brother. You know what I'm saying? So well, I mean, it's I, I want you to be taken care of. I want you to eat good. Yeah. 
You know, when I go to breakfast, you go to breakfast. When I go to lunch, you yeah. come with me. When I go to dinner, we eat together. You know, you know how it is. When we go to movies, we're fucking family. Here. We're a corporation. So, but you sit there at the end of the week and go, Jesus fucking Christ. They bang me out, you know, because oh, yeah. my hotel room is free. So you don't really know the rates. Yeah. You know, and the contract where they put me up, I always go, why'd they put me here? You know me. Yeah. I'm a simple dude. But the agency I'm with asked for fucking a bop bop. Exorbitant because they want so to put him down. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind him staying there. I don't mind, you know what I'm saying? But that room is 380. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. And I got to give him, well, how's he going to get there? Walk? Yeah. So I try to cover his plane ticket. Look at the plane ticket today. Again, they're going to raise the prices. Yeah. Again, because gas price is something with oil. Yeah. Again, they're going to raise the prices. See, that's the thing. And I, and I said to myself, you know what? I don't know how funny I am because you know that when you're a comic, you think you're funny. You're, you're, you're funny enough to get your ass out on that stage, and the laughs are there, but you're never quite sure because you see how you see they're laughing at somebody else that you're like that fucker ain't funny. But then there's this thing about it where I'm like, if I go out of town, because then I just got signed to my agency. How's it gonna look if 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 I can't go on an audition because I'm I'm playing some shit gig in fucking uh, Seattle or or uh, Texas or or something like that? They need me here. They don't they don't have me here. They're gonna drop my ass, you know. And I booked just enough to keep my agency interested in me. So are you booking right now? I'm not booking, but they're sending me out little bit by little bit. I need if I if I were to start booking something, they would send me out more. But it's like. It's so crazy because the percentages have even gone down, mm -hmm. even lower. Well, you know, I was telling you about trying to get extra work. Extra work pays anywhere between 114 to 172 a day, depending on whether it's new media or it's a show that's on a network. Um, if you go overtime, I, like I was telling somebody, I either want to do five hours and get paid the eight, or I want to do 14 fucking hours, because a 14 hour day is going to get you over $300, you know? And you never know when you're going to get Rick, booked let me again. Ask you something, yeah, my brother. Remember when you could have joined the army? <laughs> yeah, you remember? Yeah, I remember those days. When you're 18, you could join the army and be walking around when you're fucking 38. Now, in hindsight, how old are you now? I'm 43. How fast was it you became 38 after high school, Joey? I went to sleep. I was 25. I woke up. I'm 43. I have no idea what okay, happened. Guys, so if you're young right now and you're listening to this, let me tell you something. If you're fucking confused and you really don't know, and this is from your Uncle Joey. I don't want you out there working at fucking some fast food joint until you figure it out. Try it. Yeah. Try the service because let me tell you something, guys. 20 years goes by quick. Yeah. Listen to me. You're my brother. I haven't oh, I seen you in fucking two years. If you'd have quit your job 20 years ago, you would have been working today full time. Yeah, I know. And that's the end of this conversation. And this is why I tell people, you come out here, it's all men on deck. I want you to get a job. I, I appreciate that you had an apartment. Yeah. But at one time in your life, it's like there was, I worked with a guy last week from Boston in Omaha, Nebraska, mm -hmm. Tom. Bro, this guy had me back there sweating fucking bullets. <laughs> We, this guy was so fucking funny with that Boston it. accent. It was just a three-man show, and he was doing a half hour, and I'm like, how am I going to follow this fucking yeah. guy with my boring-ass old man material? He's, you know, 41. He is hilarious. Yeah. He did 50 minutes on Friday night because I only did one show. Yeah. So I stayed for his first 35 minutes. There was 100 people. I smoked the joint. I sat in the back. Yeah. Just to support. He thought I left, but I watched. Dog, he was destroying that room. The next night I talked to him the way I'm talking to him. I just met the guy and I go, so what's going on with you? He's like, ah, I'm living in Boston. I do all the gigs there. I play cards with Lenny Clark. I play golf with him. This guy was a top-notch comic, guys. You know, he's a top-notch comic. And I go, what's going on in Boston? Do you want to? He goes, well, I don't know. I'm still confused between L.A. and... As a dynamite guy as he was, and as funny as he was, he was pissing his pants about that thought. Yeah. I go, so what you mean to tell me is you're this age, you have no kids, no wife, nothing holding you back in Boston. You're a nomad in life. Go for it. When I realized I was a nomad, 
I always had an idea I was mm -hmm. a nomad, yeah. but I didn't want to believe it. You never want to yeah. believe you're a nomad. You know what you're a nomad is? That you're alone. Yeah. But the reality is, once they fucking cut you from your mother's umbilical cord, you're, you're alone. been alone. Yeah. You just had a little help. Now you're on your own. It's a scary thought. And that's all you you just you never really you were scared. You wanted you wanted to make sure your rent was paid. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, brother. What's up, buddy? No, I mean it's I, it's just it's because it, I made the jump. It's scary. It's you grow up and it's you don't. It's not only that you want to be successful, but then it's also, and especially living in L.A., there's a lot of homeless people. Like, it's not that big of a, like, like that, like that was a fear of mine. That would have made him shoot straight to the top. You think yeah. so? I know so. Yeah. I know so. I want you at one time in your life to have your back against the wall, to really know what life's about. And that's when you fucking figure it out. That's what they don't teach you in a six fucking year college, okay? I don't care how many master's degree. It's when you back yourself up in a fucking wall. And when I come to you and I go, Lisa, yeah, so that blah, 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 blah. And you, after 10 years working at my fucking lawyer firm, you come to me one day and you go, I want to be a partner. Fuck you. I'm the head Jew in this motherfucker. <laughs> Don't you ever fucking talk to me like that. You're a little Jew from fucking Boston, you know, and whatever. And now, guess what? You're married to my friend over here. And she's right. beautiful and she likes to go on vacation and you want to do your thing. But you got to get out of this guy's clutches. You know what? Mama needs a new pair of shoes. She got nice feet and everything. So guess what? You got to open up your own lawyer firm. So you got to go to your father and borrow fucking his life savings and go to your mother and borrow her life savings and come to me and come to Rick yeah. and you Gotta go to work. And let me tell you something, that 18 months suffering, five years from now, you're going to be a millionaire. I'd rather you take that 18 months suffering than continue under somebody else's fucking... And that's all we had to do here. You would have yeah. been done right now. How long have you been in this town? Goddamn, 19 years almost. Like, done. Right now, you would have been going to the bank, getting checks. <laughs> People would have been looking for Rick <laughs> Ramos. <laughs> when did you shoot Latino Payaso Slam? That was 2006, 2007, there somewhere there. Yeah. So the door was open. The door was, no, the I door fucked was it up. Open. I fucked it up. And I loved if you. Anybody, and, I, and, I, and I held you, and I tried no. to talk to you from the heart. From the heart, I said, you got to take this chance. And we have nothing to lose. Listen. I lost a wife, I lost a kid. Mm -hmm. I knew that that child was never gonna, I knew I was gonna get invited to First Communion. Yeah. I knew I wasn't gonna get involved in the student plays. I knew I wasn't gonna get involved in anything. My life with her was five hours on Wednesday and every other yeah. Sunday. I could either stay there and take that beating for the rest of my life and become the local guy that's funny and yeah. maybe get a job in radio or I can give it a shot for me and make, a, you know, something. I yeah. want to do something. And, dog, that was the scariest fucking move I ever made. And But I learned from taking a chance from doing, being a salesman. Yeah. You know, there's a chance when you walk into a place, yeah. they're like, guess what? Hey, man, you want to be a salesman? Yeah. 90 days. <laughs> We'll give you 1500 a month for 90 days. The average Joe goes, wait a second. I make 850 a month. And that's yeah. how I work overtime. They're going to give me 1500 I got to wear a shirt and a tie yeah. and sell cars. The first three months are great. We get 750 every two weeks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're in there learning the do's and yeah. don'ts. Yeah. That fucking 90 day comes, Jack, on the 15th of the month. You haven't sold a car. And they give you a $600 draw just to keep the lights on on the 15th. But you got to cash that out by the 31st. Then you get paid on the 5th. You gotta, you're got minus 600, Jack. Plus your dry cleaning, your gas. Yeah. You'll start selling cars. You'll start selling cars. And once you start selling cars and you start gaining that confidence in yourself, now you know. You know how it works. You know, at the beginning of the month, it's going to be slow. You're going to take three dogs. You're a fighter. You're going to take, take the first five days of the month. You're only going to work your shift. You're going to go to movies with your buddy Lee. He's your fucking desk <laughs> partner. You're going to get some blow. You know what I'm saying? You're going to go see the new fucking <laughs> Thor movie. But then on the fucking six, you know you motherfuckers got to go to work. Yeah. And all those lucky lose that come in, now you got to work 12-hour days. So all those lucky lose that come in, all those lucky lose. 
you got to pressure them a little bit, give them a card and stay on them. They're going to buy a car within fucking 72 hours. They're going to run into a salesman within 72 hours. Hopefully it's you. When yeah. they come on the lot, I'm just looking for next year. I don't give a fuck what you're looking for. <laughs> By the time you look for a car, they'll be rocket ships, bitch. Mm -hmm. We're buying a car today. today. You got to manipulate them to buy a car today. Yeah. And you know, it's uh, it's salesmanship. Like what yeah. we're doing right now isn't about who's the funniest guy in the world. There's a thousand funny guys. Your love is movies. And I've always asked you, I said, just do a fucking routine about movies. If you did a routine about movies, you'd be real. One of these TV stations would pick you up. Yeah. And we'd get insurance or something. You're a talented <laughs> dude. I love you like a brother. And I didn't bring you in here to break your balls at all. No. no. And I you knew the situation. I just want people that are trying to get into comedy mm -hmm. to understand that sometimes you have to cut the umbilical cord in comedy with your job yeah. and everything, at least give it a shot because that will motivate you to become the comedian who you're bound to become. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing that always scared me, and it's the thing that, that really fucked me up because, you know, I've been alone for 20 years. I'm beholden to nobody, you know? I got no wife. I ain't got no kids. I don't, you know, there's, there's not a note. I'm driving a fucking 17-year-old car. But there's always been that fear of, you know, tomorrow it's going to go right into the shitter. And the reason that I stayed away for so long, and I know this is not, this is not on you. This is um, completely on me. I felt ashamed. I honestly felt ashamed for, for being afraid. And I couldn't face you for the longest time. No. And I knew you still loved me. I knew you oh, cared. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no. I was worried about you for a while, but I know I Well, I was in a dark place for a while, yeah. No, no, we spoke about it on the phone, yeah. and I know you had a hard time there. There's nothing ashamed about being afraid. Nothing ashamed about it. As long as you keep it in check yeah. and promise yourself that you're going to do something to take yourself out of that zone. Yeah. Dog, I live in fear. I was telling my wife that, you know why I don't go to this diner over here. I don't want to put nobody down. Yeah. There's a diner across the street from 7-Eleven over there. Okay, let me break down this 7-Eleven. that's fine. Yeah. You got hell 7-Eleven over here <laughs> on fucking, what is this, Magnolia and Tahunga. Right. That's every man for himself. There's toothless people. There's <laughs> pimps. There's fucking, it's a fucking nightmare there. Yeah. My favorite is the one by the police station, and trust me, that one gets creepy people. The police station is 50 yards away, and my line, at least I had. Not even. Have we not seen creepy motherfuckers in there at night and shit like that? You see them looking at red box, but they're mm -hmm. looking to mug somebody. They got an open mic at the end of that. No shit. They got a Japanese restaurant with, what, what's the rating, C? And my line, I took Lee and he fucking questioned me. This guy will eat a fucking horn from a billy goat. It's called, uh, and he looked at me like, we're going in there? I go, yeah, we're going in there. So dry cleaners in the 7-Eleven. And a dry cleaner in the 7-Eleven. You got to take your chances at this sushi place. <laughs> I went twice. One was him and once by myself. Yeah. I was in a rush. I couldn't. Yeah. I went in there and got the teriyaki chicken. You could tell, oh, this was not... <laughs> This was this something. This is not prime shit, huh? Yeah. No, no, no. And the fucking spicy tuna was the ugliest spice. As I was eating it, I'm like, oh. <laughs> you're pay, you're I'm pay. taking my chances. <laughs> Little Mexican way. I look in the back. He's the cook. He's everything. <laughs> when he picks up the phone, he makes believe he's Asian. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hilarious. Hilarious. I went in there twice, and I'm like, you know what? But they have a sidewalk cafeteria, cafeteria there. Mm -hmm. Like, the last thing is an all-state insurance office. And yeah. a dumpster. We're, we're, and a dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> right fucking there. Right, Lee. Uh, how, please, so they don't think we're crazy. Because every week on that fucking church page, I hear that Joey Diaz stories. How far is the dumpster from where people manjari? Mm -hmm. 20, 30 feet? You can spit called, at it. I called it. <laughs> <laughs> I called it 25 feet. Now, before the dumpster, there's a comedy club. Yeah. It's a state farm. It, it says State Farm Insurance, but if you go there Monday through Friday and give it's them, comedy, it's comedy. There's five people, B Y O B. <laughs> Do your own thing. They go there after the sushi club. He lures them in there. Come on in. <laughs> then you gotta have a dry cleaner, a Russian guy. I want them to get my gee fucking fix, fifty bucks. I go four strings, fifty fucking mm -hmm. dollars. Then they got something else in there. Bartending school. Oh, they got the bartending school. You got to see the beauties that hang out there. <laughs> Wednesday night happy hour, $25. We give it to you, you try it. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> you see cars crashing. <laughs> and next to that is the most expensive gas station you will ever yeah. go into. If gas down the corner, listen, a mile from there, gas is three thirty-five mm-hmm. a gallon. Right there, it's seven seventy-two dollars, <laughs> and people pay it. Yeah, you know why? It's next to the police station, so they bang out the police station for high prices mm-hmm. because the police charge their cars there. Yeah, they got like what a fleet of eighty, and they charge their cars. And it's there. right off the freeway. Right so. off the fucking freeway. So if you rob a bank and you're running out of gas, right there, boom. <laughs> And then you got Chandler 7-Eleven. That's uh-huh. the bad one. That's where the owner got killed in front of his wife. That's where it's it's fucking ISIS. Yeah. It's ISIS. You walk in there, the music's on. Lee, uh, we, I took Lee at midnight. I go, Lee, let's go in there. This is worse than East Hollywood. Yes. This, wow. The Chandler 7-Eleven, I took Lee in there one night. They had the full turbans in full effect. <laughs> They had the music on loud, and they were like giving white people the fucking Malukai, put it back, like two dollars, like they were eat. Yeah. yeah, they wouldn't make eye contact. I go, Lee, this is ISIS. About two weeks later, there was a stabbing. They yeah. murdered somebody in front of that place. A homeless person. Yeah. A homeless person came out with a knife and stabbed the owner. And then two weeks ago, the fucking shooter from Las Vegas, the brother that was jerking off the little kids, yeah. he was in the building right next to that Seven Eleven. <laughs> we ain't bullshitting here. This, that's a bad fucking area. You know what I'm saying? That definitely has the Malouk. Yeah, it's got the Malouk of debt. You got to be careful over there. I don't go to that 7 Eleven. No nothing. more, huh? No, that's a creepy 7 Eleven. They got a little spot there where people hide where you make the right from Chandler. It's a creepy. It has area. a 24 hour uh, laundromat. Laundromat. Yeah, 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 bro. Those are people. But the reason why I don't go to that diner across the street from 7 Eleven yeah. because the bus station's down the corner. Okay. Any day. Bro, I don't want to sit in there at 2 in the morning and either somebody robbed the bank and pulls off and shoots you in the head when you're in that dining room. You're going to have to write jokes. You're drinking coffee. Somebody comes in and shoots you. I don't need the aggravation in my life. <laughs> Plus, the food is horrific. If I die because I'm in that place eating shitty food, I would shoot myself. Like, before the guy came in and pulled the gun, mm-hmm. I go, da, 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 da. I deserve to die just to be in here knowing that the food sucks. Give me the gun. I'll shoot. Ah! I was, that's how bad for, I think Lee, I know that spot Lee ordered the spaghetti in there one time oh. you had to see what this looked like had a bay leaf still in it oh my god it was fucking the ugly I'm like Lee don't eat it <laughs> just send it back let's get out of here let's get real fun I think we used to go over there from after the haha we used to go in there after the yes. haha and that place is just fucking horrific it's horrible I know the spot my brother everybody has a different journey everybody has a different path especially in this comedy game yeah. Number one, you can't look at what anybody else is doing. I said it only the other day, and I'll tell you again. Thinking is the enemy of man, mm-hmm. especially in our business. But we have to think. So if we go, if we have to think, we'll make it quarterly. Yeah. So you get the press for three days every 90 days. And then get back in. That's it. how I did my comedy. Yeah. Every 90 days, there's disappointment. It takes you two days. You suck it up. You look at the want ads, you tell yourself you're going to go back and look for a job, and you fucking, something good happens. You go to the Laugh Factory, you get a standing ovation. And on the way home, you're scratching your head going, I can't quit this. Yeah. So, the best thing about this situation, Rick, you ain't over. I'm proud of you because you kept the fucking podcast I got the going. podcast going still. You're still there. You're still there you doing know? your movies. And that is really your passion. Yeah. Stand up, you like Richard Pryor. Listen, let's face it, you don't like going on the road. But, no, but. you could also do it as a hobby, get a little paycheck, mm-hmm. and do your little podcast and fucking keep doing your thing. You're the best in the business. When it comes to arguing about films, there's nobody, I'm telling you this, there's more knowledge than you. Yeah. Plus, I know the passion you have for it. The passion you have for film is stronger than anything I've ever seen on anybody. When I was a kid, I had a passion yeah. for film. I would wait for a film. I knew the date of the release, where the mm-hmm. director from, where did he eat lunch, yeah. what the movie was about. I was there, front and center. Yeah. One fifteen, the movie came out. I was there at 1 oh, fucking yeah. o'clock at attention, stoned and with a full stomach full of fucking Chinese food. I can name 10 movies right off the top of my head that I was there opening day with no line, no drama. I was getting in first. I was getting on that fucking movie theater first with a full... I I still remember, dog, being in the fucking halfway house, having two dirty UAs, the third one, you're going to prison. But I didn't give a fuck 
because a movie was coming out that Friday called Goodfellas. Oh. And I remember still, be, I read the book when I was locked yeah. up in, in prison, and I heard that movie was coming out. That was like Sleepers. Like, yeah. I was right there when Sleepers came out, because I read the book in Seattle. Josh yeah. Wolf gave me the book. I love all those situations. Silence of the Lambs, yeah. and you go see the movie. But what movie were we talking about? Well, Goodfellas. 1990s, Scorsese oh. just... I never, it. I'm never forgot. I'm in the halfway house. They're gonna throw me in prison. I'm like, what am I gonna do, Joey? I've been taking a chance all my life. What, what the <laughs> fuck am I doing out here? <clears throat> I'm like a gentleman. About 11:30, I went to the fucking little Chinese place I used to go to. My little lunch special. I never ate the egg roll. The egg roll was for shit. But they made a good, nice Szechuan beef with mm -hmm. steamed rice. Nice little egg drop soup. Some noodles in the soup. I left there, I did, in those days I was in the halfway house, but I always had a gym. Mm -hmm. When I was married, I had this hidden little gym, maybe the size of this, I paid 35 bucks for it. It was on the other side of fucking Pearl Street, and in the middle hung a punching bag, and I had weights, a stereo, and then I had different compartments all over the place, like tools, but it wasn't tools. Mm -hmm. I would hide weed in there, and sometimes an eight ball of coke, or, and I would put shit under the punching bag. I had hiding places in there. So I would roll a joint, a skinny, skinny joint. And I knew they were gonna drug test me. Yeah. They were always gonna drug test me. I would take a hit off that joint. I would go to that gym and just go, Chick. and I would blow it out, wash my hands. And then from then on, I would just drink water, water, water. But before I leave, I'd hit that bag for an hour my fucking sweats would be drenched yeah. just a little before my knees. That's it. That THC was gone. Yeah. I would key, and I never got busted for THC. They always got me for coke. Yeah. But I always just took one hit. And I still remember eating that Chinese food, running over there, taking that one hit, and going to see I saw always knows <laughs> from rags to riches. I didn't give a fuck if I went to jail. For that, I was not going to see Goodfellas sober. That's how stupid I was. Just to let you know. No, nah, you know what? There's no a magic to that, though. You know, I remember when I saw it. I was high school. I was about. It was. I was probably a, a sophomore or a junior, and we all went to see it, and we're laughing our asses off. And the fucking straights are sitting there like, "What the fuck is these kids are assholes? This is not funny." And we're just screaming the whole time at how funny this fucking movie is. And that's when I learned it was just like. These fucking movies are magic, man. They made things make sense. I watch movies now, and I'm just like, no matter how shitty my day is, if I go home and I put Midnight Run on, it's over for me. What's, I the, get best, back. what's the best movie you watched the last year? The last That's year? That's come out the last year. No, no, Shit. no. There hasn't been much of anything, you know, really. I mean, the Harry Dean Stanton film was kind of sweet to see him go out. Uh, Logan was really well done at for like a for like a because it's not like a comic book movie it's more like a this weird kind of noir like you could see robert mitchum playing this guy at a certain point you know um fuck what the hell the jackie chan movie was good because it was like was Chan the, is the, the foreigner a lot of, a lot of uh, martial arts yeah he at 63 years old i'm amazed that the guy can still fight I mean, he's on another level, man. That dude's the real deal. Always you know, has been. Takes care of himself. Unbelievable. Yeah. No, J no, no. Mike Black. It was Mike Black's birthday. And I said, Mike Black, Jackie Chan is going to be at the American Cinema Dick, the Egyptian. They're going to show three movies. He was like, I can make it through maybe two. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Just get your ass over there, all right? So I got his tickets. We went. Jackie Chan was there. He spoke. The RZA was interviewing oh him. My God. But I'm watching police story police story three and this movie he did called miracles it's amazing to watch a man move the way he did because a human being shouldn't be able to do this shit i mean he's hanging the in but he the, does all his own stunts. he did all, yeah he does all of his own stunts he might not do them as much now but we're talking about movies that went back to the mid 80s and there's a fight scene the final fight scene <coughs> in this in this movie miracles is it's like a remake of a fair of a frank capper movie he's 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 fighting in a rope factory on these huge um, uh, stilt like 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 platforms, and they got these rollers cut, filled with rope that are being pushed. And you know there there are moments there where he can fall twenty thirty feet, and he's holding on the rope and he's pulling himself up just by body strength. It's just fucking amazing what he could do. 
And I watch this thing, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, all respect to Bruce Lee and everything, but Bruce Lee just kicked people's asses. He didn't do what Chan did. Chan did these things that were like superhuman. He was on a whole other level. So it was like fighting, and it was like the stunts. And, I mean, I've seen him do shit that most other actors would have died making these films. He, phenomenal. It's almost like parkour before parkour Oh, way existed. before, yeah, yeah. And they were actually talking about that. The RZA was talking about how he inspired a lot of that, uh, a lot of that French shit and that, that Brazilian parkour and... Uh, that that moved over to they made a couple of movies in France called D13 which really cool shit but it's all based on Jackie Chan running jumping over things you, if he could walk through a gate he never walked right through the gate he would he would kind of crisscross his way up a set of walls over the gate and then just go over there and kick the shit out of somebody it was on a it was a whole other level but there was a there was a respect for the image you know there was a respect for for being able to to um, to create this thing that, that as you're watching it, you imagine yourself as Jackie Chan. You know, you imagine yourself doing these fight scenes. You imagine yourself in that world. And even, even at 63, the foreigner delivered. Delivered, man. And he's delivering on a dramatic role that you didn't think he was capable of. Now, for a guy like you, yeah. when you see a good film, how happy are you still? I'm thrilled. Like he, I, I still remember going off a few far. We went to see the... Uh, Godfather? No, we went to see the other one, the one with Clint Eastwood and the Chinese kids. <laughs> and we took Edward San Juan. Yeah, yeah. And they're saying all these poor Asian slangs, and we're sitting there with Edward. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with it. laughing. And he started laughing. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll fucking yeah. laugh then. And we had a great time. But uh, we, you know, went when to, you- we went to see like two or three movies in a row because yeah. I had clearance then. There was no children. The phone wasn't ringing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The phone don't ring. You might as well go to movie. When you were living over there by the Y in, in, North, yeah, yeah, in Hollywood, yeah. we were hanging out all the time. You blew my mind by the passion that you have. Like some people talk the talk. You're a guy that really walks the walk. The shame with you is we haven't figured out what agent could get a guy like yeah. you to do what you do best, which is argue film. You know, you know about cinematographers. Yeah. You know that when he shot the movie, his wife stabbed him a week before because he cheated on <laughs> it with a Puerto Rican chick down during the hurricane. Yeah. I mean, you're the type of guy that knows all that information. And he's passionate. Well, it's, a passionate, fa- it's fascinating you know? to me. And you love terrible movies and you love sensational oh, yeah. movies. And just like everybody else, we all, there's a bunch of movies that I watch and I go, I love this movie. To some people, it's fucking terrible, but mm-hmm. maybe I have an attack. You know a movie I like lately? What's that? Boomerang. Boomerang's great. Eddie Murphy, Martin fucking Lawrence, The Father, Bang, Bang, Bang. Yeah. Fucking, you know, mm-hmm. all those movies, I I don't know. There was a part in me when, like, there was two movies. I, no, by that time, I'm lying to you. By that time, I had seen, uh, there was two movies I had no interest in watching. Do the Right Thing. Mm-hmm. When I watched it, I still watch it when it's on now. Yeah. And uh, another Spike Lee or what? what was no, it was another Spike Lee one. It was Harlem Nights. Okay. Another movie. You, Lee, you still haven't watched Harlem Nights? No, I haven't. No. Harlem haven't. Nights has moments. Harlem, Harlem Nights Harlem. has some great moments Harlem in it. Harlem Nights is so fucking good, Lee. If you don't watch it this Friday night when you stay in with your wife, don't show up here on Sunday. <laughs> That's it. If you don't watch Harlem Nights with your mom, you're going to die. You know what they're yeah. doing a remake? Not a remake. They're doing part two to come into America. Really? Yeah. Okay. Is I've heard true? this. I've heard this. Yeah. Bro, they want to do America was on somewhere about a month ago. And I was like, you know, huh. enough with this bullshit. I'm no writer. I'm no Hemingway. I'm hmm. sitting over here trying to write a clever joke. Yeah. Like, I might as well write a joke about Jokic hmm. fucking coming to America's on. I watched the whole thing. It's hilarious. It's brilliant. <laughs> when you it watch is. some of these movies and you're like, mm-hmm. this is 30 fucking years old. How is this still on and still fucking relevant? There are times when I go see a movie and I'm just like, fuck, they don't, there's, you know, the biggest problem that I have right now is that there's nothing in theaters that really connects. I'll go see a movie and I'll be like, all right, that was a good waste of a couple hours. My wife went to see Thor today. Which one? Thor, something with Thor. I don't fucking. You know what? It's fun for a kitty type of thing, but it's not, you know, I had, I had a good time with it. I love the Hulk. Jeff Goldblum was great in it, but. 
overall, I'm just tired of these fucking Marvel movies. They don't really they don't deliver anymore. They're just, you know, you can only it's, be a kid for so they long. They remind you know? me of that agent that hires you and just sends you on Latino auditions, even though you're Jewish, but you got a suntan. Yeah. Last time you went to fucking Jamaica. And they, you're like, listen, I'm fucking Jewish, bro. What's with the Spanish? Oh, these guys want to see you. you they want to, yeah. It's the same thing with the Marvel thing. And I, listen, it's, it's a, I have a stand against them. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think adults should be going to see that shit. It just, but that's me because I'm an asshole. Like, listen, bro. And the more people pay for these things, the more money they make. Well, that's the, the thing. More, they like, get lazy. They put them together in they, three days. No, they're just they're just making shit because they know people are going to go see it. When you see a great film, like I mean, I can't remember. That's the problem. I can't remember when I saw a great film in a theater. I can't remember when I saw a movie that really blew me away, and I was just like, God damn, that was good. I can't wait to fly. Yeah, on Thursdays, because especially if I'm going like Delta. Mm -hmm. Or like Jet Blue yeah. or something, because I might see a fucking movie that might blow me away. Like mm -hmm. I still remember being on the longest yard and having no coke, and being in New Mexico and being fucking bored. But I got a big bag of weed. And maybe I can get some room service. Mm -hmm. I got nowhere to go. Yeah, my girlfriend's up here. I got no girlfriend down there. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just watching TV and I'm going, ooh. Pay-per-view movies. Why not? I, st I still remember this. Yeah. Special K. I still remember scrolling and seeing a picture of Denzel with a gun in his hand with an explosion behind him. And going, this guy was good as the fucking saxophone player. Oh, yeah. And he was great in this movie, and he was great in the movie with the slaves when he got mm -hmm. whipped. And he was tremendous in training day. Let me watch this. Yeah. And I'll never forget ordering, like, room service. Like, Adam would give you, you have a thing when you book a movie called, uh, what's it called? Per diem. Per diem. Yeah. So I would take the per diem and go, it's not my money. I, they, they feed me on the truck. Yeah. But I don't really want to leave. I want to watch this Denzel movie. I haven't, I haven't even heard of this. What's it, what's it called? Man, I'm, man, I'm <laughs> I haven't even heard of this movie. Oh, fuck yeah. Room service, do me a favor. Let me get a cheeseburger. In those days, they had the kids' mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. Oof. The kids' mac and cheese was bigger than just a, oh, six orders of it or something. It was one order like that, and it was just shells with cheese all over them, underneath yeah. really cooked cheese, yeah. Yeah. Italian sauce, Jesus Christ! And I'll never forget sitting there, and all of a sudden there's this guy, and you see Christopher walking. Mm -hmm. like, oh, I got something to work yeah. with. Yeah. How bad could it be? And just sitting there at the end with tears running down oh, my yeah. face with a napkin with my leg twitching <laughs> you know what i'm saying like that's because it's the levels it's like he takes you on a fucking ride and what was the that's the last time i was fucking moved oh really? i fell off you my know. chair and call room service and go listen what are they going to charge me to re watch this right now well yeah. it's going to cost you an extra 9.95 wait a second i really want the fucking thing is there any way <laughs> for free no it's going to cost you 9.95 fuck it i got per diem and I just clicked it out. Yeah. That was the, that's when, like when I watched Angel Heart the yeah. first time. I went to, to see the one o'clock oh, Angel yeah. Heart on a Sunday. Me by myself. In those days, I used to go get this chicken cutlet sandwich. Yeah. There was this place, Roses on Boulder, mm. across in the Fox Theater. And they used to have this, Lee, 87, mm. way before I bought the mug in, mm. or anybody else was looking chickens. These motherfuckers in bold were making this chicken, and they had like two different chickens on the rack, and you would see the little hippie dude rubbing them with mm -hmm. lemon, and I would buy the whole fucking half a rack and eat it, smoke a joint, and go into that movie theater on the Lord's Day, Jack. And one Sunday, I walked in there, and it was Angel Heart. I saw the commercial. I knew it was with De Niro. Yeah. What, what could this possibly be about? Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting there. I'm full. And ba boom, Angel Heart. And to be honest with you guys, I'm lying to you guys. I went to see Angel Heart, my ex wife. We sat in the movie theater. <laughs> we watched Angel Heart. And at the end of it, I told her, I looked at her, I go, that was the best thing I ever saw. Oh, yeah. But I have no idea what just happened. It like, was all mood. Like so it was, that was the thing. It's like you didn't know. You didn't know who it was like, what was Mickey Rourke in that movie? So I was, said, what is that? he in his own dream? Let's what? end this. Oh, yeah. Let's sit here and watch it again. Yeah. We got nowhere to go. You guys don't want to go. No more. My mother's cooking. Fuck her. Call her up. Tell her we're going to be late. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's watch Angel Heart again. That's the type of shit I like. Yeah. I like to watch something that in three quarters in, I know what you like. And I yeah. can call you and go, dog, 
What are you doing right now? Well, I'm cutting fruit. Put that knife down. Get your ass to a video store and get this yeah. motherfucking movie tonight. And you'll tell me, I saw it. Oh, my God. I was thinking about getting it. Bam. Boom, yeah. I love that. That you know, is my favorite fucking feeling. That's the thing. When you find something that it's always been there, it's like finding gold in the fucking dump. It's like, you didn't know what was there. The first time that I saw Thief, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And this is at a time when, when you remember Tower Records? Like, when I was a kid, anywhere between 12 and maybe 18, I would spend all goddamn day in Tower Records. And they had a special. Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can get a movie for like a dollar or something like that. So I would get there right when they opened because I wanted the pick. I wanted my four movies that were going to last me those two days. And I could take them back on Thursday and get two more movies that were going to last me two days, you know? And I was just going to watch fucking movies. And I... I remember seeing so many goddamn things, foreign films, underground films, exploitation How many movies shits. you got in your house? Uh, probably about 2,000. Probably, if I, if I did the number. you motherfuckers got 2,000 films in your house, tweet me, all right? <laughs> it's just you know, the next two days. I probably have like 3 or 400, but that's it. Do you really? Are you well, solid, too? I used to. I like, and I'm, How many I'm, movies I'm you mad, got at home? I'm really mad at myself. Movie, movie, you're a movie woman? Hmm? Oh, you know what the great thing about DVD is? You can go back to the exact moment and play. You know how many times I've seen Goodfellas, but how many times I've just watched De Niro sitting at the end of that fucking bar, getting ready to take the take a take a toke off that cigarette as he's thinking about killing Maury, and Sunshine of Your Love is playing over the fucking soundtrack. Probably the single greatest fucking thing I've ever seen in a movie because you sit there and you're like, I don't give a shit what anybody tells me about how bad smoking is for you or how how ugly it is. It's fucking cool as shit in that movie. You watch Bogart and the Maltese Falcon, De Niro and Midnight Run. I wanted to smoke because of these guys. I didn't give a shit. Bring the fucking cancer. I didn't give a fuck because these guys were cool as shit. There was well, magic in that. I yeah. remember before I moved here, I go, what if I ever got a movie and I had to smoke? Because I didn't smoke. Yeah. I go, can you imagine I got a movie and they asked me to smoke? And my character doesn't smoke. I'm going to try a cigarette. Just in case. <laughs> and that's how they got you up. Yeah, that's how they got me the first time. I got all dizzy and shit. I'm like, this ain't bad. <laughs> and then Good before time. you get on stage, you want to get a little tweaked up to take the nerves away. Yeah. Let me give some shout outs. I want to ask you something. Yeah. Are those my glasses? Damn, my little yeah. You don't wear glasses. You're a young guy, 43. Oh, shit. Please. Jesus Christ. My brother, the Puerto Rican, saving the Puerto Rican for real. A lot of people talk a lot of shit. They don't listen. This guy took his own money, he got fired, and he actually went to Puerto Rico. So a shout-out goes to my brother, Rene Encarcion. My other brother, May Maj Ray Majewski, Lorne Rosenker, Joey Rooklyn, Kevin Dallow, Bobby Sharon, Bob Lalingas, James Thomas, and Angel Alvarado. Bring it on home, bitches. I will see you, cocksuckers, this weekend at the New York Comedy Festival. Renee and Carcion will be there Saturday night for the late show. Beside that, it looks like Tuesday at the Comedy Store in the original room, about 9.15. And after that, I got the Improv in Irvine, November 22nd. That's it. The fucking year's coming to an end. You know what I'm saying? What do you think of this new thing they're doing with De Niro and Pacino and the whole crew? You know what? I would have no faith if it wasn't Martin Scorsese directing this thing. It's der it's Scorsese, and Scorsese doesn't fuck around, you know? Let, let's be honest you about one You think he's still thing. got it? I, fuck yeah, I still think he's got it. I don't think he's made a bad movie. He's made movies that aren't as good as, as other films that he's made, but The Wolf of Wall Street is a fucking batshit crazy... I, I mean, I, I don't know. I've never used like that. I don't know what, what Coke is like, but it looked to me like... I got some in the refrigerator. You got some? Sure. <laughs> go, go. Just in case you really no, want to take a look at the wild side. <laughs> Yeah, get it's a the joke. There's get the, no get the fucking fan. As a matter of fact, this is my tenth anniversary. I know you don't. You you haven't used ten fucking years. I know. No using. It was. It, you know. Left. It's a beautiful thing. It's it's it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know. It it's it's a Without, thing of pride. Hold though, on though. A second. You were bad, man. Oh shit! You told me how bad you were. You no you know. Shit! You everybody knew yeah. except me. I had an idea. I just didn't know for sure and shit. But, but you know what? You get to a certain point in your life where you realize. You got to change. You got to make it. When I saw, you know, like when I saw Flight, 
Did you ever see that? Oh, she's beautiful. Yeah, That's man. It, you know? She's just a little woman. Though. Yeah. She ain't even fucking around no more. Like, last night at our house at 630, it was a motherfucking war zone. Yeah. It was a fucking war zone in my house at 630. My wife made pot roast. <laughs> What does that mean? That sounds like well, a... Because a kid don't want to eat pot roast, I right? I up at 5.30. <laughs> like... Everything was kumbaya on the way home. There was no drama. She gets in the car. How's your day? Where's my kiss? In Spanish, she gives me a kiss. Mm -hmm. She climbs on the seat. Last week, she stepped on bubble gum. And I got it on my seat. Do I get pissed? Fucking not at all. She jumps in the car. She tells me about a fucking day. She beats us to death. And then she's like, where are we going? Like, where the fuck are we going? Home. She's like, I, I don't want to go home. Well, where do you want to go? I want to go to the mac and cheese restaurant, which is fucking Boston Market. And mm. then the Italian <laughs> restaurant is Maria's. Yeah. And then uh, sandwich is Jersey Mike's. She likes the salami sandwich yeah. with fucking cheese plain. You haven't she introduced her to Roma's yet? No, no. She's not that type of sandwich. She, can, she, she can. won't <laughs> even think of nothing in there. <laughs> So my way, you, 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 it all you. sounds good. Apparently, I have the same. We're gonna eat pot roast tonight. She's like, I don't want it. She goes, Do you don't even know what it is? She's like, I just don't want it. <laughs> but you don't even know what it is, and I'm, I'm hearing this back and forth. Yeah, like I'm I did that as a kid too. Like I'm gonna say, Listen, what are you giving for? Just try it. If you don't like it, then mommy will make you something else. But why turn this you into can't something? Can't say that. That's how... I go, just try the pot roast. But daddy, I don't want it. Mercy, listen. I'm trying to fucking save you here. <laughs> All right, this is before the Bruce Lee clip. I yeah. This is way before I put the Bruce Lee clip. There mm. was war at the house. So I just played my hand. I sat down. I saw her sit down, and she's bitching. My wife cut the meat for her with the carrots, the whole yeah. fucking thing. She's talking some shit over there, some nonsense. And I'm waiting for this to eject. My wife sits down. And she says, let's say prayers. Mercy said the prayers. She goes, I'm not saying prayers either. <laughs> I guess I get what I want. I just fucking proceeded to start eating the pot roast without it <clears throat> and watch where this would go. And I loved it. Every, yeah. every 90 days, she pushes the envelope deep. Mm -hmm. But it gets so deep that it bothers me because she reminds me of me. Yeah. <laughs> That's the same emotional damage kind. I was fucked up. And death and she gets pissed. Yeah. So this went on for about 30 seconds. I'm not saying prayers. Mercy, either say the prayers or go to bed. I'm not going to bed. I'm like, oh. <laughs> she's digging herself deep about a fucking minute. Because I know, I know my wife. My wife don't take no shit from her at all. I'll take a little bit of shit more than my wife. Yeah. And then, But now it's dinner time. I don't want to hear nothing at dinner. You want to argue, take it outside. I don't want no arguments while I'm fucking sitting down. God's the master of this table, and God don't like arguments at the fucking table. So I didn't say that. They kept going back. Mercy, say the prayers. I'm not saying prayers. I don't want this. I want peanut butter. Mercy, please, just try the fucking meat. Finally, my wife goes, then go to bed. She grabbed the push. I don't go to bed. She was in there like the exorcist, bro. I'm not going to bed. I don't want pot roast. I just kept eating the pot roast. I ate the potatoes. I ate the fucking spinach salad. I took my heart pressure medication. <laughs> I sat there for about 10 minutes. She was still going nuts. And then she was jumping up and down and mm -hmm. kicking the floor like, boom, boom, boom. I'm not going to eat dinner. And I finally went in there. I'm like, listen, dog. Time out. You got to fucking knock it off. I go, just taste the fucking meat. That's it. Just taste it. Why are we going through all this? I don't want to eat it. I don't like it. Just fucking try it. It's a carrot. You always eat carrots. Try the fucking carrot. She started jumping up and down, and then she pulled the daughter card out. She knows how to pull the string, and she put her hands out and came to me like, I haven't seen her in 10 years. Like she had gotten kidnapped by the Colombians. She came to me like, Papa. And I go, no, no. I go, go oh fucking God, taste so the meat. I go, go eat the fucking meat. And she's like, I'm not on one. I said, okay. I tried to bail you out. Don't, don't, don't say that fucking bail you out. And I closed the door. I went out there and I could see my wife's face getting redder and redder. I said, you know what? I got to take a ride to seven. I got to get rolling papers. I got two boxes of rolling papers <laughs> in case it's a zombie apocalypse. So I got, I got rolling papers hidden in baggies and waterproof fucking boxes just in case it's a zombie apocalypse. Me and Leah getting paid 70 30. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so well, why are we going in? I went, I, I, bro, when I left, there was shit going out there like it was the exorcist. Oh. Yeah. I went I went to the fucking whatever. I bought some nicotine gum and I took a ride the long way around the neighborhood. And when I got back, she was still at the dinner table with rosy cheeks, eating the pot roast and the carrot. I knew something went down. When I walk in, I could see my wife was upset. I go, what happened? She goes, I had to read the fucking riot act. And I was like, I don't want to know. And she goes, you have no idea. And But now, everybody, but my daughter walked up to me. She apologized. Dad, yeah. I'm sorry. And I go, hey, bro, it happens. But you got to taste the fucking meat. You can't just <laughs> say it on one. You, you ate all this shit when you were a baby. Yeah. When she was a baby, she would eat the skin off salmon. Listen, only savages <laughs> eat that greasy fucking skin off the bottom gray of the shit salmon. off the salmon. <laughs> she would eat that disgusting gray shit and look at you like, give me more. Disgusting. Kids are the fucking hardest thing to deal with, man. Rick Ramos, you're 43. You're yeah. funny. You're a good writer. You got a little resume. You got some tape. It ain't over till the fat lady sings. Oh, it ain't over revamp get a little notebook write your goals down just because you're not at the store does not mean you're not a comedian no i know I and it does not mean you have any heart you, you still got you've been here now you gotta go i know now you gotta shoot a motherfucker now you got no choice you can't go home empty-handed if you go home now it's like i smacked you 10 times in the stomach yeah, and you packed your bags and left so now it's, you, you're 43 I you know. got you got 20 years to retire <laughs> You know, Junior Soprano, how old was he when he got the Sopranos? You want to check IMDb? You got a lot of life left. Well, that's the thing. At least I had. Learn, listen to these stories, man. Yeah. There's nothing to be afraid of. He's my brother, Rick Ramos. I never thought down of him or anything. No. But I always knew till you threw the safety net out, your full commitment was not, you're not going to book a role. You're not going to figure out how to book a role mm -hmm. until you're a little hungry, until I'm threatening that little... 200,000 you got hidden in Mexico in Borgata Nichols. Believe you know me, that money is long gone. Stop. It's stop. fucking you gone. It's the done. <laughs> Between the both of you, you got money hidden everywhere. <laughs> Saving the bonds. I wish I had a I quarter wish, of the wish, money please. that you think I have. Bro, hidden. you still got Nazi bonds. You got something, <laughs> cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the Nazis gave bonds to the Jews. You got more money than fucking God, both of these. This guy worked as a school teacher ten dollars a day. He was making twenty two hundred thousand a year. He quit one day. He, just, he got fired because he yelled. Cause they yelled at the kid. Slur. Some little fucking Mexican kid. He's like, uh, the kids Mexican. are fucking assholes. What are you? What am I supposed to do? Uh, you know, trying to be a teacher is a tough job. The that shit was, that I put up with. But you had the comedy from it. But listen, brother, fuck all that shit. No, it's the movies. I, I didn't think when you came on this podcast tonight. I didn't even think we were going to talk about half the shit we talked about. But I, one thing that I always talk about in this podcast and leaves my witnesses. Mm -hmm. Number one, you ain't done till you ain't done. Yeah, I'm 54, guys. You ain't over. This motherfucking game is never over. I thought I was done at 40. I really, really thought I was done yeah. at 40, bro. I really thought I was done. To be 40, 54, I wake up every morning so happy. I go, I can't even believe it. I can't, I don't even know who this guy is, but it doesn't matter. I'm still here. And I still work just as hard, Rick. Yeah. It's just a different hardness. Oh, I know you do. One thing you cannot have, you're already here. If you don't do it for fucking me, you don't do it for you. At least do it for Marilyn, who's dead. Cause she never had the chance. Marilyn always told me if she ever got back from the hospital, she was going to revamp herself like Madonna. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to believe. She was no Madonna. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. You, you bothered me a little bit with what you said about how you shouldn't have acted that way at her funeral. Yeah. You and I both know that woman. Yeah. She would have loved oh, no. when it went down. Oh, <laughs> she no, would have loved no. how fucking nuts oh, and the God. violence. She was, I could hear her screaming during that whole thing. Dog, the only people I insulted that night. Oh, yeah. I insulted maybe eight people. There was only one person that I looked at and I contained myself because I really, really loved them. Mm. That was Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> Andrew kept asking me, What happened? Why are you so red? Are you okay? And I wouldn't even reply to him. I'm like, if I go back in that month, I think I went back in there, and they were gone. Yeah. They were gone. So what happened was, to continue the story, I'm trying to stay clean. I get talked into going to this fucking thing at the comedy store, and I go in there, and I have a drink. And I go in there, and somebody went up first, and they go, Joey, you got to go up second and talk. 
I go, yeah. please don't put me up that there. That was a big mistake. And it was just a mistake, and yeah. I knew it. Lee, I know me. It was a mistake me going down there. Because I, when I love somebody, yeah. when I go to a wake, it's all the people I died. Now I'm not crying for you. I'm crying for Ralphie. I'm crying for Anthony Balzan. I'm crying yeah. for Dominic Special. I'm dying for Freddie. So I'm dying for all the Everybody buddies. that meant, yeah. All those emotions I had, my mother, mm -hmm. my father, all those people, you know. Dog, I'm starting to miss Ralphie. Saturday sometimes I look on my phone just because Ralphie used to call me on the road on yeah. Saturday mornings. I'd wake up for breakfast thinking I was because I'm on the East Coast. It's yeah. 8 in the morning. It's 5. Lee's not going to call me with yeah. a problem. My wife ain't going to call me. And I'd be sitting there. I'd just go to the hotel. Like, I always get up early on Saturday morning. Yeah. I go to bed late, and I get up early, and then I fucking eat something at the hotel, like oatmeal. I get two eggs sunny side up, some mm -hmm. wheat toast, and three pieces of bacon. And then I smoke a joint, and I go back upstairs, and hopefully it's like a Law & Order marathon. Like, <laughs> there's two episodes of Law & Order <laughs> before fucking rush hour yeah. nine. You know what I'm saying? On TNT or... And I watch both of those things, and then I just pass out. But I'll, if I fall asleep at 10, it's 7, I can't call my wife. But the only person who would call me every Saturday, he would look at my schedule, see if I was on the road, and he would always call me on Saturdays at 8.15 was Ralphie May, no matter where I was. I could be there, and I'd see that phone fucking glittering. Yeah. Who the fuck is calling me? Fucking Ralphie. What's up, dog? Nothing. I'm over here in this hotel. The food sucks. You know, you know the whole thing. So now it takes time. In Marilyn, I don't miss as much as I used to when she first passed. I remember. But I still think about it. I took Lee to a cochinito, and I showed Lee. That's where Marilyn used to live, out of respect. Yeah. Marilyn, he was sitting like this, and I go right up there. It doesn't even look the same. Yeah, I don't want to go back. Like, I went up there about two years ago. Whenever I go to the cochinito on the way back, yeah. I make the U-turn. El Cochinito is one of the finest Cuban restaurants in oh. the area. It's become, it took, them tw it took them 19 years of eating there, and they pushed me over the hump. And I finally took lead two weeks ago. We had to go do Be Real's podcast, and we said, fuck it, let's take an Uber. I never took Lee there, and I got the fucking, I got Lee the pork chunks with the fucking white rice and the black beans, and tell him what else I got you, Uncle Lee. Cuban fried rice. Oh, oh my God. With the plantains. With oh, the plantains. The fried bananas. Let me tell you something, they got the best fried rice in California that yeah. I've had. Yeah. Like, it's really fucking good. Like, East Coast now, a lot of sprouts, mm -hmm. a lot of egg, yeah. green onions. They got, like, pork. What else they got in there? A little shrimp. They got, like, pork, ham. Ham. Oh. They have oh. everything in there. But you got to eat it there. Yeah. Don't take it to go. No. It's not that bad at home either. No, fuck. No, but it stunk up the car for four, four fucking days. <laughs> Every time I got in there, I got fucking hungry. I'm a fat fuck, Lee. I activate through no. odors, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's going on there? Everything good? You got any questions? Oh, go ahead. Right there, and then make a right. Right there, lock the door. And make sure the camera's not on. These people yeah. are disgusting. So. Perverts in this world. No, but there you go. God damn. I think about her. I think about her. It's weird, because sometimes I don't think about her at all. And then, boom, she just pops into my head. No, she pops into my head. And it's, it's, it's just... I wish she was around to see my daughter. <clears throat> I mean, she really fueled my love for cats. Yeah. We would talk a lot about cats. I would call her, <laughs> and she knew everything about cats, and yeah. she'd bust my balls. I'll never forget the time I called her, and I told her I made a mistake with the cat. I thought it was a female. She goes, you're such a fucking asshole. Because <laughs> I was calling the cat princess. <laughs> Give him a fucking fag complex. <laughs> yeah, and the cat was a male, and she found out. It's funny, man, when you do comedy with people. You build this weird bond, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you guys are looking at Twitter or something, and you see a tour together, and you see four comics, and you say to yourself, wow, I didn't know Joey and Lee were friends. Well, we're on that tour together, and we're big, four big names. Yeah. We're probably really not friends. We just had to take publicity pictures, and we're make-believe we're having a great time. Mm -hmm. It's like when you see George Clooney and Brad Pitt giggling on the car at one of those events. Yeah. They talk on the phone every day. No, they see each other. Also, they're best friends because there's cameras around. But the funny thing happens that 
those guys are making money, so they have to get along with each other. Mm -hmm. They give you the persona that's going to be a great time. Then when they tell you, you don't see these people. Then there's a certain comics, like Josh Wolf. Josh Wolf and I were co-headliners in Seattle together back in 1995. Again, it's 2017. This is 1995. And for maybe three years, him and I did all those local gigs in yeah. Seattle together. You and I were brothers from the comedy store. Yeah. And Marilyn was one of our sisters mm -hmm. there. And I still remember the night you got passed. Oh, God. I still remember the night they passed you, how emotional you are. You I called, called my mom. Mother. Sure. From the payphone. Remember, I called my yeah, mom from yeah. the payphone. I was prouder of that moment than I was graduating from college. It's okay. It meant so much to me. So listen, for everything that's happened in 20 fucking years here, you got two major accomplishments that can't happen to a lot of people. First one, you became a regular at the store, and you got passed by Mitzi Shaw. Yeah. You're not one of these okie doke motherfuckers. And number two, you also shot a Latino special that mm -hmm. they still play on Showtime, yeah. and we don't get a dime called Nothing. Piazzo Comedy, Comedy Slam. Slam. You had so much to work for. Don't give up at this point. I'm not. But do me a favor. Yeah. It's 2017. You've been here so long. Every day you wake up, your mother's getting older, your father's getting older, your nephew's getting older, yeah. your sister's getting older. I know you want to be down there. Make the days count. If you got to fucking get up every morning and be away from your mother, do me a favor. For one year, take the year off. I'll help you as much as I can. I will take you on the road as much as I can. But if you call me up like a man one day and go, Joey, I'm going to give this one more year. And if, it does, if I don't get the, if I don't get to fucking A, I will move back to fucking whatever and become a big celebrity down there and play the organ at the baseball game and throw out the first ball. Yeah. Let's go for broke. All right. Let's go for broke. You know, I'm trying to do this Netflix thing. I'll take you on as many dates as I can. You know what I'm saying? I got to spread right. it around, but at least just to give you some confidence and get you in front of good audiences. From here on in, I want you to prepare. But the most important thing, the fear factor has to, you you know, uh, we had Wesley Walker in here yesterday. Mm -hmm. Wheeler Walker. Again, I'm very sorry to do this to you. Hit it, Lee. Leonard Skinner. Leonard Skinner. Oakland. 1977. Do you need to go or anything? Are you cool? Okay. Is she in front of the cameras, my love? No. You know, I want you to think about this, because I, I was telling Wesley, mm -hmm. we all have rough days. We all have days that, uh, you know, not all of us yeah. could be fucking Brad Pitt, bro. God didn't throw us that card and, and whatever. It just, so there's days you wake up and you have doubts about what you do, what you're trying to do. You tell your father, I want to be a fucking piano player. And he's like, you're in no danger. Look at your fat little fucking fingers. You had a hard time wiping your ass till you were 16. How are you going to be a piano? You know, <laughs> nobody believes in what you're doing. You know, it's, it's kind of weird. And put it, you know, remember, we, we saw this last night. Speed it up a little bit to like right there or something. You know, I, I saw this, and for years, because of prior and the influences I had, yeah. and being at the store, and being put at the position I was put at at the lineup, I would always load out a little bit, Lee. I would always, uh, you know, you learn to be aggressive. Yeah. But then I saw this, and this is an interesting, interesting as can get. This is the Oakland Coliseum. Mm -hmm. It's 1977. They didn't sell it out by themselves, I yeah. don't think. If somebody wants to look it up, I think that they were part of a tour like them and Mata Hoople or yeah. something. Like it was one of those Saturday afternoon things. Yeah, it looks like a festival. Like a right. festival yeah. type thing. It's Oakland. It's not Texas. It's not the South or anything like this. Put this a little louder, Lee. Look at these guys and look at how they're acting. Okay. There's no dancing there's no matching outfits do you think these guys really care what they look like when they went up on stage look at the look at this guy a singer with a hat on with a t-shirt with maybe wandy warhol on it
So I'll speed it up a little bit, my brother. Maybe right there. They didn't get the memo that they weren't, people weren't, there. look at these people. Yeah. Look at this shit. Look at the Confederate flag. They're in Oakland, Jack. All right? They got the presidents on top. It's 1977. Look at all the way up. It's filled to the brim. These are white kids. This isn't fucking... This isn't the country. Look at these guys on stage. Do you think they kept their day job? Look at them. They don't give a fuck, Rick. They didn't even get the memo. They thought they were doing a bar in it at Bubba's house and they were going to roast a pig. Nobody told them they were in Oakland. They don't give a fuck. If you don't have this attitude in this business now, it's a motherfucker. And I know you can put this together because I know for a fact, for a fact, you're way better than half the people that are doing movie shit. You just have to dig deep and figure out how you can make a living doing what the fuck you do. And I think I'm going to hook you up with Mauricio Alvarado and do his little apprenticeship for 90 days and shit. Oh, yeah. Carry his little buttons and shit. <laughs> I think you and Mauricio would be a good fit because you're a funny guy and you got two of the best credits you could have. I don't want you to feel defeated. There's no reason why you should be doing uh, extra work. Didn't we go to that little gay guy for a while? That was dating fucking. Was that you and me, or was that Rivero and me? Which one? That we went to. What's the guy from Apocalypse Now? Lawrence Fishburne. Fishburne, yeah. Remember his? We went to his boyfriend's school. Was it me and you? Or no, me and Rodrigo. I think it was you and Rodrigo. Okay, it was me and Rodrigo. We used to go to that little Mexican dude. <laughs> Does that hurt, Rick? That he's like, oh, they all look the same. No, because no, 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 no. Rodrigo and I sadly do look the same. <laughs> no, no, no. There was no, a no, time where we I were know. all really into acting. And you, me, that. and Rodrigo were really talk about films. And, yeah. You know, I mean. I, we would talk about the scenes that really meant the most to us. And those moments where you were like, fucking, that was, that was real. That was honest. That was like, you know, put you on another level. It's, a, that. it's a, a strange love to have when you have the. I have the love of cinema. You have when I was 23, yeah. when I could, when I was robbing apartments, when I had daytime to watch three or four movies in a row, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And now, you know, as you get older, you want to watch everything. I try to watch everything on a plane, yeah. you know, as much as I can. Uh, the last, I watched Planet of the Apes like I totally the most racist thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I don't ever want to watch that again. That was, you know, that was written by <laughs> racist people. Like, what can we do to stop them? Mm -hmm. Let's write a movie and put apes in there. But the first, like I said, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, the originals, yeah. Beneath the Planet of the Apes is my movie. I got you. I was a little kid living in New York City, and when I went to see that shit, they took their skins off. Yeah. You remember that scene? Yeah, I remember that. And there was all veins and shit. Yeah. I, I loved it, you know. I'm I telling you, it. sometimes it's when the movie hits you, when the movie, I, I don't know. I mean, when I saw Easy Money in a theater, and I was fucking... 10? 1983. Yeah. Summer of 83. Yeah, which would have made me six, nine years old. It was the biggest home. Like, America couldn't wait for Rodney to fucking do something. Yeah. And the word was out. Dog, Rodney Dangerfield got his own motherfucking movie. Yeah. Like, no more Caddyshack. I'm no. not going to be a supporting character. And I didn't know. And lead. I can lie to you and tell you I knew who Joe Pesci was. I had no fucking <laughs> idea who Joe Pesci was the first time I went to see Easy Money. But I remember that was the first time. And I'm naive or whatever. That was the first time. I've been to a lot of movies that I brought beer in there. And I don't yeah. drink. But the whole movie theater was banging out beers because... You kept hearing the bottles mm. in the floor. Clink, clink, they rolled clink. down the hill. Like they, you, <laughs> there were moments. There, there, there like, was somebody in the back. How many of them were yours? I, I stood them up. I'm a gentleman. <laughs> you stand them up until you leave, and then you kick them over, and then they all roll at once. But during the movie, you don't fucking kick them over. So during this movie, every like eight minutes, you would hear the guy put the bottle down, and it would just roll. <laughs> 
and <laughs> half the movie, like, and half the movie theater would howl and laugh them because yeah, that was when when movie theaters were at a slant. At a slant. They, were, they yeah. weren't like this. No, uh, no, it was like the comedy shit. works. Yeah, it was like boom. It was like the comedy works. It's always like a little slope mm-hmm. and shit. When you go down the comedy slip, the the comedy works. That's the that's what people mm-hmm. like about that club. Yeah, that you feel like. Uh, your boy in Gladiator. I'm a rock. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. Let's see, whatever the fuck he says. Because the people are sitting right around you. Yeah. Like a little like a little amphitheater. They're right there. And it's beautiful. I mean, when you're at the comedy works, I'm here and you're right there, bro. Boy, you're boy. right there. <laughs> <laughs> you're right there. You're right there, right on me. Like this. Bang. That's why I got on stage the first time. You know how fucking intimidating that is? When you see something like that, I mean it's just like God damn. You know, the first time that I came, I came out here, I guess it was 99, 98. I was selling radio airtime in in Phoenix at a black soul station. The, nobody was buying this shit. It had no fucking signal. And a buddy of mine got us tickets out here. And he was like, you want to go see L.A.? I was like, yeah, I want to move there. And I came out here on a Tuesday. And Paul Mooney was hosting the original room. And, you know, I was a huge Paul Mooney fan. And I want. I went in there and I watched this shit. And I was just like, I want this. I want this so bad. And I would see. I, I, I saw Brian Holtzman. I saw some of the craziest shit ever crazy imagined. Brian Holtzman still goes up there, <laughs> and they still put him up on Saturday nights at about one thirty. <laughs> and he goes up there and destroys that fucking yeah. room. And you know, another guy. Yeah. That when he went on stage, you were petrified. Yeah. You were like, when is this guy gonna make it? Like that's how scary he is on stage. Oh yeah. You like going to comedy. Next time on a Saturday night, you guys wanna go to Hollywood late, a little late, eleven o'clock, mm-hmm. there'll be sixty people in the audience. Go watch the true funniest guy in LA. If he's on fire and if he's clean, because he's clean now. Yeah, oh, he's, he's clean? clean? Really? Yeah, he's been clean for a long time. Oh, okay. Former airport. Mechanic. mechanic, plane mechanic, worked at the airlines, came out here, would destroy the original room. I mean, we'd sit there in the back. Screaming. Screaming. I'll never forget one night it was packed, and he's like, I went to see a new Charlie's Angels movie. <laughs> <laughs> were you there with me? We I were fucking that. dying. Because that's what you do. You go in there. Who's on stage? Brian Holtzman. Bye. Yep. Pam, you go in the back just ready to die. And he's in there fucking right. talking to mine. I went to see the movie Charlie's Angels. Yeah, sure. I dare you. I dare one of you to do that karate move. I'll break your fucking neck. I'll take your little fucking neck and I'll fucking break it on the floor. And he's going off and we're in the back. Out. Remember he would say, I'll throw you in the truck of my car and drive around bumpy roads. <laughs> Come on, bitch. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> we would sit back there. Me, Rogan, Mooney, you. Marilyn. Marilyn. We would sit back there at those Holtzman nights. And just spit would be coming out. Yeah. I'll never forget the night they put the fart thing up there when he was up there. <laughs> put the fart. There was Vinny Favorito would go oh. up there at night and put a fart machine under your seat. Like, yeah. So you'd be sitting there all night with your wife and girlfriend, and every time a comic would do a punchline, you would hear a fart. <laughs> and after a couple of minutes, a comic would go, I don't know who the fuck is farting, but whoever it is, you got to stop. And you hear another fart. <laughs> And then the comic would finally go, you know what? Somebody's fucking with me. That's okay. All right, have a good night, ladies and gentlemen. And this went on one night for about three or four comics. And there was a fallout. Who's oh next? Brian Holzer. <laughs> and he's in a shitty mood. You know, he got there. He's pissed. He's drinking. When yeah. he was drinking, oh, God. his comedy was... It was something that by the third minute, you were fucking dying. Yeah. He would go up there yelling and screaming. Just the most insane shit. Just the most insane, crazy. Oh, the one about his mother. That he had a kid and he used to suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> what? And he used to take him to a baseball game. And my, goes, my son's, my, son's son, my, my, my gay son. My gay I love my son. gay son. <laughs> I have a gay son. That's what, That was it. That was the one that used to make people get up. Remember, well, I'm what getting he, out of here. Remember what he would say was like, he's the best ball player. Uh, 
most home runs, most batted in, and I take him out to the I five and I let him suck cock. <laughs> I let him suck a uh, truck driver cock. <laughs> that's a resort. That's a re- that's he a sucks reward. Eight dicks. He makes money. <laughs> I love my gay son. <laughs> and people would get up and run out of there, or people would take the ride. But when they, he, they thought they were seeing the devil. It when he crazy. was on his game. Yeah, scary. And then Damon Wayans walked in one night, saw him, put him on his show yeah. as a recurring character. Yeah, he That's was how one of the funny yeah. dude was, but he didn't want to quit his job either. He didn't want to quit his job. He didn't yeah. want. He, got, he moved to. Then he moved to when he got clean and sober. He moved to Hermosa Beach and became a dog catcher. That's <laughs> the funniest fucking story. How can it be a dog catcher? <laughs> so I would be down there with Rogan at Hermosa Beach before I got banned from down there. Golly <laughs> got, got Magic Club, I'm banned for life. Before I got banned from them, I'm in there one night and Holstrom runs it. I do a guest that guys. Say, Why do you have a uniform on? You didn't know. I give out tickets and I'm the dog catcher. That's right, he was parking enforcement. Yeah, he was parking enforcement and the dog catcher. Oh my God. But, but the single funniest comes, guy you'd ever seen? He still comes up to the comedy store to fucking do spots on Saturdays. Yeah. How's that going, John? Let me tell you something. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show and to see you. I'm so glad that and we're to know you're yeah. healthy and to know that you still have a lot of damage that needs to be done. You never answered me what you thought about the De Niro movie. Which one? The, the Irishman? Yeah. What do you think it's going to be like? What have you heard? What have you read? I'm thinking that this guy, st- you know, there was a moment in um, Silver Linings. this movie done already? <sighs> they were talking about it. They wanted to get it done. I think um, there were a couple of directors involved in it. They did a, the Irishman. Oh no no no! That's a different film. That was a that was about a um, that was about a hitman who. Um, this is a hitman too, but this was a this is based on a this is based on a book called You Paint Houses, right? And in the storyline. What would happen was when they wanted to off somebody, they wanted to get rid of somebody, they would call a number and they say, I hear you paint houses, which means that they're, they're, they're talking to a guy who shoots people, people in the right, head right, and paints the wall with blood, you know, and that's his name, Frank the, Frank the Irishman something, but that's, that was a different film. I have that film in my collection. That was, I can't remember the, the actor, but I know Paul Sorvino was in it and a couple of other Sherpa people. Sherpa was in it as a garbage Sherpa man. was in it. Okay. Robert Davi was in it, I Robert believe. Robert Davi was Robert in Davi it. Okay. Was in that's him. the one movie. Yeah. I think I read for that yeah. one, Got Dick. They made like four movies, four mom movies that year. Mm-hmm. I went like, oh, for four. Like 2009, right? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, it was like 2000. Yeah, somewhere around that. That year going into Christmas, I was doing a mafia movie in Spokane, Washington, where I had a warrant. Yeah. I was like, how am I going to do that? They go five weeks. They already gave me a number. It was Val Kilmer, this one, that one. Wasn't a bad lineup. I walked in there. I killed them in the audition. It was somewhere in the valley. And they said, would you be willing to go to a tailor and get fitted for suits? I said, yeah. The role was me. Mm-hmm. I never heard from the people again. Never got the job. And after that, it was like three or four mob things that I went yeah. in for in a row. And that was one of them. Mm-hmm. One of those fucking, what's that show on TNT? It's on ABC about the author that writes books and he's got a chick friend. Castle. Castle. Castle, hmm. Castle got a mobster on there once. You know how many times I've been in for Castle? <laughs> Probably eight fucking times. It's over now. Is it? Yeah, I'll never get Cal's cocksuckers. Yeah. <laughs> they like you, yeah, but they never fucking book me. No, they will book you. They no. like me, but they don't look me. And then I would watch the episode, and there'd be a Soprano on there. Yeah. Once the Sopranos ended, that was it. Yeah. I couldn't get dick or while the Sopranos is on. Even if you play the mailman on the Sopranos. Yeah. I'm not crying. I'm happy as fuck. No. And I'm happy that I got to see you, dog. No, I love I love being here. I love catching I'm What's the name of your podcast? Bro? Watch this with Rick Ramos. We're talking about Harvey Weinstein this week. We're talking about the scandals. We're talking about all the way back to the early era, the silent era, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle, Virginia Rap. We're talking about Natalie Wood, you know, Jane Mansfield passing away. I mean People are talking about this Harvey Weinstein like it's the worst thing. And imagine they've been living this exactly. Marilyn Monroe got passed around. Yeah. God rest his soul. Yeah. That beautiful woman. Mm-hmm. They had a bang of the president, they, a gangster, 
uh, you know, it was. It's it was, always uh, been that way. It's always been that you know? way. It's yeah. so funny that now they edge light on this fucking fake fucking thing. That well, be. This is what we were talking about. It was like these people are vilifying Harvey Weinstein, who's who's a fucking piece of shit, no doubt. But these are the same people that were standing in line to kiss Roman Polanski's ass, and he ass raped a thirteen year old girl. He drugged her, anally raped her, vaginally raped her, orally raped her. And they're saying, oh, we should forgive him and let him come back into the country. Fuck that. This this goddamn industry is evil on that level. And I'm just kind of disgusted with the whole now this this high and mighty bullshit. This shit's been going on for fucking years. For years. Yeah. I want to know. You know what I almost put on whenever I was thinking about? How were the agents that sent you to a hotel room? Yeah. To meet with, a, you know, to right. meet with Steven Seagal or these, you know. I see assistant that walked out. What's that, my love? There's always an assistant, though. Yeah. Walks him up and leaves. Yeah. Because they knew. You get him in there. Yeah. And then, you know. Who, who? Well, didn't they say Bill Cosby had, like, like, oh, Bill Cosby like NBC notorious. had people that would, would take care of it? You know what? That's the thing. When you're making money for them, yeah. they will cover up everything. They will go out of their way, you know? And part of me is like, well, these women should have said something. And the fact that they took the money meant that, you know, it, it, it continued the victimization. But you know what? You're a woman in Hollywood. Sometimes you, you're, you're sitting there telling yourself, they're not going to do anything anyway. I might as well get a little something out of it. Rose McGowan got like a million dollars out of it, you know? But I'm glad they're bringing the, I'm glad they're bringing them down now. Fuck him. But in no way is this a unique thing. <laughs> No, Kevin Spacey's is, not unique. This shit has been going on for years. Well, it's funny because I went to eat Tuesday night. I, yeah. did, I did a Greg Fitzsimmons radio show, and after what I met my agent, and we went to this restaurant, and we were sitting there, and there were three other like big time agents, supposedly. You know me, I don't say nothing. Nobody, I just ate my fucking dinner. But the guy they were talking, they go, first off, he's not getting fired for what he did thirty years ago. He got fired for the shit that's been going on the last three years on this set. Oh yeah. You know what people don't realize is, if you if you watch the movie by Liberace, it's mm -hmm. one thing. But I read a book about him years ago, mm -hmm. and something I watched I don't know maybe 15 years ago before the movie was ever made that, that towards the end he got really creepy. Yeah. Because they become queens. Mm -hmm. And now they get really aggressive, and very, it's like boomerang yeah. when the chick. Oh, brings, when Eartha Kitt. When Eartha Kitt yeah. brings home Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy. Have you seen that, Lee? I think you should be part. Is that, is that <laughs> the movie you should be parts of? I don't know. Boomerang, <laughs> Eartha Kitt. And can, Eddie Murphy. Can you make it darker? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, darker. Go ahead, go ahead, dog. But he did it, and yeah, that's he, what was great about it. Yeah, he ended up you know? doing it because he knew. He didn't complain, he didn't sue her. You know what was great about that is that Murphy Murphy played weak. And Murphy you remember when Murphy hit, Murphy was the coolest motherfucker to ever do it. Again, you know I still remember walking into the movie theater on a cold night. Yeah. On a Sunday night to see fucking uh Beverly Hills? No. No. Uh 48 Trading? Hours. Oh, forty eight hours is on a whole other level. Fuck that. Dad. Trading places I saw at a movie theater in Aspen, Colorado. Yeah. In 19, the summer of 83. See if it says Boomerang, Eddie Murphy, what's the scene? With Earth, Eartha, Eartha Kitt. Kitt. Seduction. Eartha Kitt Seduction. E A R T H. Something like that, right? Yeah, that's it. Do you remember? He just, he. There he goes, right there. Boomerang. But it starts in the living room. Oh, that's it. Yeah, boomerang. Yeah. Right there. It starts up the first one up on top. It starts in the living room when the black butler answers. The <laughs> and door, he's laughing his ass off. And he's off. laughing his ass off. Because he knows. And even when he turns away, you could hear him howling in the other room. Wouldn't you 
is a very attractive woman standing on a bed in heels. She's about 65. Oh, God, yeah. No, like she's a bathing not. suit. Yeah. 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 With a bathing suit from the 50s. She's one of the stockings. original cat women, remember? She's got the hooded stockings on from head to toe, <laughs> which those things stink automatically. They make a woman's <laughs> feet smell like funny and <laughs> shit. I like toes out <laughs> not your and yeah, shit. Oh, sure, sure. I don't want them with a burglar, burglar hat on. You know, it's the burglar hat. Bright in here. Wouldn't you like to dim it, make it a little more romantic? <laughs> Oh. oh, she is kind of. She's old. Yeah, didn't see that. That was. I remember that. You know what? The, the cool thing. There's a moment. Remember when Robin Givens comes over? She fucks him, and then she leaves, and she's like, "I really needed that." And he's just like, "You know, I had tickets for us. I spent this or that." And he looks over, and there's two hundred dollars on the on the nightstand. And then he just pulls the he pulls the covers up on himself. And he's like, "Call me," and it's just like you didn't expect Murphy to do that. You didn't expect Murphy to. Murphy Murphy was all. I always thought that Murphy was a hell of a better actor than he was ever given credit for. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I always thought Murphy yeah. was banging up. When you watch him in Nutty Professor, he knows what it is to be a fat guy. But I liked him in fucking still 48 hours. 48 hours is... And trading places, I still remember that yep. camera coming up on him. The thing about uh, Boomerang was, why I like Boomerang is when this movie came out, I was in the dumps. Yeah. Oh, my personal life was fucking shredded. I had this little white girl I was in love with. She moved to New York City and shit. I was in Boulder all alone. I was doing stand-up twice a week. I was eating Valiums. I was snorting blow. Yeah. I was just lonely. And I used to go to the video store and rent movies every day like an asshole and watch one movie and one stand-up special yeah. and write notes from the stand-up special about what I liked mm -hmm. about that style. You were time. studying it, yeah. And I watched Boomerang, and I f went off the charts. That scene with Chris Rock, just a bunch of scenes, oh, bang, yeah. bang, bang. They just have... 15 great scenes in that mm -hmm. movie that I think it's a gem that not a lot of people watch. I like those movies when I get surprised. Yeah. When I'm fucking in shock, like how good the movie is. Yeah. There's a lot of movies that you watch that the first hour would take you in that direction. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck, I'm on to something here. But then you're like, fuck, they gave me such a disappointment. Yeah. Like the last three Johnny Depp movies, <laughs> like the, the fucking one about Dark Shadows. It yeah. started off great. It was a great first hour. Yeah. The and one with De Niro, the family. Mm -hmm. I watched the first hour that I'm ready to go. And I just, loved it. I loved the movie. Until it, it's, you the know, fucking girl in that, the young girl. Oh, the daughter's great. The daughter is fucking The phenomenal. son makes me laugh. The son is great. There's you so know? many movies that you see that you're like, Jesus, there's a little hope now. I was, you, I was hoping so much more from Black Mass, speaking of Johnny Depp. Oh, yeah. But I, I thought that and I was Whitey hoping, Bulger? Yeah, I was hoping for a lot more from that. You know, you know what, the, man? I thought the movie was well done i thought he was his acting was great i think the sale of the gangster anymore that mm -hmm. whole appearance since the sopranos it just got wiped from the changed universe. the game you know it changed the game so that's why whitey bulger we all know about him yeah. like they're releasing Gotti this summer right yeah or travolta this, travolta what do you think that's gonna do I, travolta's done I mean, it's not Travolta even, well, always Travolta. comes back, but it, the, he always comes thing. back. He was great on that OJ thing, yeah. but I don't think you know anything about John Gotti. <coughs> you know anything about John Gotti? Okay, How, enough to make you pay twelve dollars on a Friday and go get two tickets and go watch it. Probably not. No, you know people it's, are too people too. The time, look the 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 era. Of when that is being set is too close to Goodfellas, Listen, brother, and Goodfellas is the greatest ever made. What's a movie you like with Jim Carrey? What's the best movie Jim Carrey? Jim made? Carrey ever did? Yeah. Oh the one god. With the fucking brother, where they go on a mission to Aspen to go get the girl. That's my. Oh, favorite. Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, Dumb yeah. and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber. He could have done three sequels. Dumb yeah. and Dumber was such a great movie. You would have paid twenty for the fucking yeah. sequel, but he told you to go fuck themselves. Then they released it twenty years later. And what happened? It, went, it ain't shit. Three people went to see it. Because yeah. guess what? Nobody remembers Nobody gets no a fuck more. anymore. We wanted it. 
a year after you released that, mm-hmm. we would have gone twice in, to see it. Yeah, that's how much we wanted that second one. You know, it's timing. Everything is yeah. really timing with but what's going on. And the right. problem with that is always, you know, a comic wants to prove that he's got dramatic chops. He doesn't want to be dismissed as just a funny guy because it's not respected. When comics should really embrace how hard it is to make somebody laugh. Nobody, you know what? A lot of people can do those dramatic roles. I don't know of an actor working today who could do easy money. There's not a fucking actor who could go in and make you believe that he's Rodney drinking, drugging, gambling, and and taking baby pictures in the morning. Who could do that? The guy that, the one guy. There's one guy that could do it. If anybody could do it, there's only one guy that could do it. Who was that? This mission. <laughs> The guy that played the brother in the boxing movie with Marky Wahlberg. Bale? Christian Bale? Christian Bale could play that guy and make it funny? He could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give you that. If I had to if I had to make a movie and you mm-hmm. came to me and you said, Dog, I got the rights from Rodney's wife mm-hmm. to remake this movie. Yeah. The part of, uh the bartender's going to Joey Diaz when they insult him. Mm-hmm. I just want that scene. You just want that guy? I just want that scene. This is why. That's why it stinks like shit in here. You want that guy? No, I want the other guy. Oh, the guy who closes his bar. Yeah. What are we gonna do today? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna get a horse in the night. What do you mean? We got a horse in the night. Really? <laughs> he looks over. There's a guy at the bar passed out. He reaches in the register. <laughs> gives the money back. Goes, Let's go. Here's your dollar. Up for the, <laughs> here's your dollar. We're closing up for the day. We're going for the track. Anybody who owns a business would not. You know, all those scenes yeah. took me back. Like, I had just lived through that. Yeah. Like, I was living in Snowmass Village. I'm lonely as fuck up mm-hmm. there. And easy money comes out. Yeah. And that's what I just went through. Where you just, what are we going to do today? Well, Lee needs to go here. What do you mean he needs to go there, Lee? What are you going to do there? Well, I got to go this, find this for my mother. What does she need it? Tomorrow. Well, guess what? Get in the fucking car. We're going to go to the track down there. There's turkey sandwiches on the way. I can't. I told my father to have the car home by five. Tell your father you're MIA. It's over. <laughs> we're taking the car. Telling me we're me and Ramos. That's how life was. Yeah. And that's how they lived it. And, and they were they adults, you know. Yeah. Where's your father? He's taking baby <laughs> pictures. What type of baby is up at 9 <laughs> o'clock at night? And they switched to him being in a strip club, strip club. straight up looking at a girl's tits. You know, that yeah. they don't even think that that would insult people today. That would, you know, the, the fucking opening where he's taking baby pictures, he's like, and well, the joint who, falls out. Well, be, even before that, even who, before who, that, who's the baby? Who's the baby here? He's like, uh, How old are you? I'm this. Yeah, well, tell, call me I mean, when you're this. <laughs> You would never get away with that line Bro, today. Every time I show that to people, they lose their fucking yeah. minds. What day does your podcast get dropped? Uh, I'm going home balancing everything and putting it tonight. So what I'm days put, does it usually it'll, drop? Uh, Wednesdays, usually. Every Wednesday. What's the name of it? Watch this with Rick Ramos. iTunes? It's on iTunes. It's on SoundCloud. Yeah. Listen, if you want to really know about movies and actors and directors and timepieces and where the movie was made and how it was made and the budget, this is the fucking guy, all right? I wouldn't put him on here. This guy. I'm sorry we didn't go into movies. You know what happens if we go into movies? This will be like a fucking Dave Chappelle show. <laughs> this will be a nine-hour podcast. My friend has shit to do. Lee is dying for us to leave. He's got a yum-yum donut hidden somewhere. <laughs> I can tell he bought three yum-yum donuts in the truck of his car. <laughs> he knew we were going to go deep tonight. So he's like, let me get three yum-yum donuts. From- There's nights I sit here with him. And I could tell him, he's my brother and he loves me. I love being around him. But after all you guys leave here, me and him are sitting here. There's one point where he just gives me this eye like, it's time for you to leave. <laughs> and I know that if I come back, I'm going to catch him with a big sandwich. Well, yeah. I know there's like... He's a, got it hidden in here somewhere. Oh, please. There's a Jersey Mike <laughs> under a chair somewhere around here. There's a burrito that's smothered because he gets angry at me for every time I tell him something. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's a great idea. All right, call me tomorrow. Like he throws me out because there's something hidden around him. Somewhere. <laughs> there's something in his car. Dude, you, you, if, if I even <clears throat> eat food in here like six hours no, you're ago you're a professional i you, know you you can smell it no i can't smell it because i'm not coming back you'll take it outside like a professional i don't eat outside here thing. you sure oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i love you motherfuckers i'll see you tuesday i'll see you friday and saturday 
at the New York Comedy Club. You know I love you motherfuckers. And I'll also see you next Tuesday at the Comedy Store. And you also, how about the night before Thanksgiving at the Irvine Improv? That's how we're doing it, motherfuckers. But don't forget one thing. And you know me, I've been working with these guys for a long time. Why? Because it's a great product. Number two, they give you a risk-free 60-day guarantee. And number three, I believe in the thought. Listen, I'm no Harvey Weinstein. But from time to time, I wish a naked lady fell out of the sky. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I have the hungers and desires everybody else wants. (laughs) But if this lady lands on you naked and she stinks like a billy goat, what good is it? You're just going to push her aside. There's no hose in the middle of Broadway. That's why I believe in this product. I want everybody's monkey to be fresh. I want your asshole to be fresh. And it's tough. I'm a chubby guy. I got to wash that muffler <laughs> three, four, five times a day. Some people take a poop. They wipe their ass. They walk around. I take a poop. I go right into the shower. There's no need to wipe because the odors are unrestrainable down there. You understand me? But I know this going in because I'm a professional fucking savage. So now that I just came here, I took a shower, even though I'm just going to sit here and sweat my ass up because I believe... And ass and monkey and slinging dick hygiene. That's why I believe in Tushy. Thanksgiving is the time to express your gratitude and recollect on what you're truly grateful for. But you listen, you know what you're grateful for? People come over your house, they watch your TV, they eat the appetizers, and then right after the turkey, they blow up your fucking bathroom. You go in there, it looks like Nakasaki. There's blood, there's towels, the soap's fucked up. (laughs) It smells like candles on top of candles, on top of Lysol, on top of eight different, different shits. Even the bathroom, there's a hand coming out with a white flag. Like it's had it and shit like this. But the best thing is, you don't want your grandma Lucille walking around with a gravy butt because all she had was a flimsy toilet paper to wipe with. Tushy will wash away all the mash, fucking potatoes, and all the mildew that last around the muffler. Me, I had a loofah before. I had a loofah. I cut it down, and I wrapped my finger in there, and I would circle around my muffler to clean off the mildew. (laughs) But now, I don't need to do that. Fuck because it. I won't have those mashed potatoes with the gentle stream of water straight to my butt, <laughs> giving it the best clean it's ever had. I mean, you want to leave with leftovers, but not hanging with fucking their assholes. So make sure you're ready for the holiday bum rush with Tushy. Stop wiping with that fucking nasty toilet paper and get on the holiday bum rush, okay? You know why? You want to walk around with a clean ass. So, hellotushy.com. That's the way to go. Again, you're like, Joey, where do I get these motherfucking uh, uh, bidets? Hellotushy.com. 60-day money-back guarantee. I'm going to take care of you. I got a Tushy bidet for $69 with a risk-free 60-day trial, all right? Plus, if you go to hellotushy.com and use the code CHURCH, I'm going to give you 10% off. Now, who's better than your Uncle Joey? You're going to feel more confident, and your asshole's going to stink fucking tremendous, okay? Who's better than you? Who's going to Santa Claus going to go to you? You got a stinky ass. Santa Claus ain't coming over. You understand me? So go to hellotushy.com right now and use the code CHURCH right now to get 10% off your order. How's and, that for you? And it's not only that it's not stinky, it feels fresh. It feels fresh. It's amazing. Lee and I live I with that I have the cold thing. one, and I love it. I love it. I, I, don't, I don't take a shit unless that... Sometimes I'm on the road. I think I take a shit. I hold it till. Sunday. You could take it on the road. You could take it on yeah, the road. Yeah, but then I gotta fucking fix it. What if I break it? I don't take that chance. That's my personal fucking tushy, and we've had it for what? We're overweight. And if that thing is fucking washed our ass and worked, how long is it gonna last? Go to hellotushy.com right now. It's fucking tremendous. I want to thank my man Rick Ramos. What's the name of the podcast? Watch this with Rick Ramos. And I want to thank my little Christ killer. <laughs> Lee Syatt for Hello. always being my partner in crime. Absolutely. And there's your Uncle Joey. If I don't see you this weekend, I'm sorry the ticket sold out. But if you live in the L.A. area, I'll see you Tuesday night in the original room, all right? Thank you very much for listening. I want to thank Rick Ramos. Have a great weekend. Stay black. Uncle Joey loves you. That's it. <laughs>